and men. The oversized, car-crushing ramrods of the world have invaded Kansas City, and they're ready for action. Plus, we'll profile the man responsible for the sport, Mr. Monster Trucks, Bob Chandler. Winston Cup champion Terry Labonte joins Eli in Daytona, and Katie and Randy kick off Speed Week 97. Motor Madness is ready to crank up another Friday night of racing. The Kemper Arena is the site for tonight's Monster Truck Challenge here on TNN Motor Madness. Looking forward to this. Randy Pemberton, Katie Haas, join you. Yeah, boy, that looks boy it looks like fun. And of course, wherever mm -hmm. Ralph Shaheen is, there's snow. Oh, Once yeah. again, he's in the burr, very chilly. But uh, boy, we're going to check in with them, get into the Monster Truck Challenge. We have a lot of catching up to do as far as Daytona mm -hmm. goes. Yep. A lot of things happening down there. In fact, the green flag for the 97 Racing Series is right around the corner, and everybody in Daytona is gearing up for the 39th Annual Daytona 500. Our practice sessions for ARCA, Winston Cup, Bush Clash, and IROC were all on track earlier today. There we go. Tomorrow, they're all going to hit the track again. And, of course, highlighted by NASCAR Winston Cup Bush Pole qualifying, that is, tomorrow. And don't forget, only the top two qualifiers will lock in their positions for the 500 on tomorrow. And then on Sunday at noon, the uh, much-anticipated Bush Clash of 97, 1996 Winston Cup champion Terry Labonte, he had the luck as he drew the pole position. The Clash is going to be followed by the Daytona ARCA 200. Wow, action really getting picking up in Daytona. Yeah, a lot of news coming out of there, too. We'll oh, talk that, about that later. That's for sure. Now, now, the Daytona 500, the Super Bowl of stock car racing, if you think you're a, 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 an authority or at least a big fan, just take this quiz we've got for you. We'll start out easy. Uh -huh. Who holds the record for the most victories at the Daytona 500 race? Okay, that is easy. We're not supposed to answer them now, are we? No. We're, okay, we're well, who has started from the pole the most times? Which three current drivers are tied for the most consecutive times starting on the front row with three? Hmm. Uh, four, which driver led the most laps and did not win? Which driver led the fewest laps and won? Okay. Uh, what year saw the most lead changes ever in the 500? It was a bunch. I know that one. What was the longest or the lowest starting position by a winner and who did it? Mm. Don't know. Who sped the widest margin of victory in 1973? What was the closest margin of victory? Ah. Oh. Uh, what year clocked the fastest winning speed? No, oh, these are good. Who are, who are the uh, youngest and oldest winners of the 500? Well, I got a good guess on one. All right, only five men have won the 500 from the pole. Two have done it twice. Uh, can you name those two? Mm, this is a good one. How much money did Lee Petty win uh, in 1959 when he won the 500? Oh, gosh, a smidgen, I bet. Mm -hmm. And how many Pembertons will be involved in the 1997 Daytona 500? Wow. Uh, Randy, if you don't know that, I know at least two, and I hope Ryan, uh, who was with Derek Cove, they, if they'll make the race, that'll be. Wait first. a minute, you hold Ryan's with Derek? Of course he is. Isn't no, he? I mean they gotta make it. They gotta make. They don't. Have any, they don't have any provisional. They don't have any points. See, they, oh well, they gotta, they gotta race their way in. Well, he's got a lot of work to do, but I'm sure he can do it. Come on, we gotta be well, positive. Say, well, no question about it. They're gonna be all right. And I'll tell you what, we've got some great racing action tonight. Ralph Shaheen, Mike Galloway, out in the Kemper Arena for the Monster Truck Challenge, guys. What do you got for us tonight? Uh, well, we were just thinking about some of those questions. I'm betting uh, Ryan, Roman, and Robin. I'm betting not much for Lee Petty on the money he won. Maybe Derek Cope for the yeah, shortest. No doubt about Derek. You think? Oh, sure. I, well, that's what we're going to go with on that. But what we do know is just kind of like Daytona is a very tricky track to drive. You need a, a good chassis set up to go fast at Daytona. You're going to need a good chassis set up to get around our racetrack here at Kemper Arena, Mike. You're going to have to have a very good chassis set up. I think brakes are going to be very important tonight. The monster trucks have set of cars to go over. Then in what would be a normal wide sweeping turn, there's a car right in the middle of that. I think you're going to have to back off, coast over that, have the rear tires cut get around it, then make your shot for the straightaway, and they're going about a lap and a half for each race they do. It's really going to be an interesting racetrack here at Kemper Arena for the monster truck drivers. This, this is one race on our tour where driver's ability and skill is really going to come out and tell the story. And somewhere in all of your questions, I'm betting the answer is Dale Earnhardt. I'm not sure which one, but I bet at least one of them is. Led uh, the most laps without winning. 
Don't doubt that. I think Dale Earnhardt certainly got to be in there. And uh, Ralph, we're looking forward to the race tonight. Later on tonight, uh, we've got Eli Gold down in Daytona with Terry Labonte. He would be down there. We'll check in with him coming up next. Stay with us. Motor Madness on TNN for your Friday continues. After this. Oh boy, we're back, and we gotta go. We gotta go see our buddy Eli. He is down. Mm -hmm. You know, Ralph is freezing in, in yeah. Kansas City, and here's Eli working up a sweat down in Daytona. Mm -hmm. they, they, he gets the big work. He goes down to Daytona. How's the sunshine down there? Eli Gold, of course, standing by with 1996 Winston Cup champion Terry Labonte, who I might also add is sitting on the pole for the Bush Clash. Katie, That's what about it, Eli? He sure is, and of course, it's definitely uh, short sleeve weather here in Daytona Beach. Terry, great to see you. First off, uh, Thank you. ready to you. defend the championship. Yeah. And what a strange day. They were mentioning earlier, only a couple of Chevys to be heard from, only three in the top 17. What's going on? Yeah, I wish they would have had a drawing for the Daytona 500 qualified instead go. of Bush Clash. <laughs> but we, uh, we struggled some today. We were like 31st fastest, I think, or something like that. So we're off the pace a little bit. A lot of guys had trouble getting through inspection was... Uh, the springs were really getting a lot yeah, of attention yeah. today. What was going on in inspection? We got through inspection, but it slowed us down, you yeah. know, by the time we were able to get through there. So it was a little bit different for us. Let's talk about this year. Winning the championship is tough enough, as we all know. Defending is even tougher. Let's look back. It was a great year last year, but everybody wants to do better. Sure. Where do you hope to improve? Well, we hope we win more races, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's where we want to improve. We had several second place finishes, uh, had some awful good runs throughout the season. And we want to try to turn some of those into some more wins. We could. Of course, we see some fine racetrack runs there, as many of the events are seen right here on TNN Motorsports. Gary DeHart, the man you're with right there, your crew chief, very quiet guy, but one of the best in the garage, isn't he? He's very good, very good. Uh, I just really enjoy working with Gary, Andy, all the guys on that team. They, they do a great job. And they're just all really easygoing guys, really quiet, just kind of all laid back. And it's, uh, it's just uh, fun to work with them. We just all kind of... Uh, really, sure. really click together. Needless to say, a lot has been written about Hendrick Motorsports lately. Uh, you're going for the championship, uh, the indictments of Rick, his ill health. There were some other stories in the paper involving uh, some alleged betting problems with uh, uh, links potentially to Hendrick Motorsports. What's it been like around the shop lately? Well, it's been, that's been a little bit of a distraction, I think. And I think the only thing that we're really concerned about was Rick's, uh, Rick's sure. health, you know. And, the rest of the stuff uh, really isn't anything to it, but uh, that's what has really concerned everybody is Rick's health. And and I tell you what, of of all the people that could have something like that, I don't think I've ever seen a guy that uh, has got a more positive attitude about it. And and uh, he's whipped a lot of tough things before, and uh, you know he's confident that uh, you know he's going to whip this. Let's talk about your races and your your season. So very consistent. How does this, how is it that some guys are always getting into a jam, and some guys like that Kellogg Chevrolet just always seem to avoid the major problems. Do you work on that consciously, or is it just your driving style? Well, <clears throat> you always, you know, you got to, if you're going to win the race first, you got to finish the race, That's you true. know, so you can't really take any unnecessary chances, but you just can't really ride around either. So you kind of got to know when to race and uh, when not to race, I think. Now, even more importantly than your own career, let's talk about Justin's career. How, how's, uh, <laughs> how's the next generation of Levante's going? Oh, boy, he's all set, I guess. It, they've got three cars this, this year, uh, uh, some little mini stockers that he runs, and uh, they were telling me the other day they've got 70 races planned at three different racetracks that they're going to run at. So he's all geared up and ready to go. Is he pretty good? Take your daddy's hat off for a second. <laughs> Talk as a racer. Does he well, have some potential, you think? I, I thought he did really well last season, and uh, I went with him one time and went and practiced with him, and I got in the car, and and uh, went out there and ran it. And it took me about seven laps to run as fast as he had been running, and really? finally, finally ran a little bit quicker. And I uh, went home and told his mama, said, I got bad news. I think he's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the newest member of Hendrick Motorsports, Ricky Craven on board, taking the seat that Kenny Schrader had. Uh, a guy who had a magnificent start to last year before that accident in Talladega, we all remember. What's his talent level like? What's Ricky Craven like as a teammate? Well, I think, you know, we really haven't got to work together much, uh, but I think he's going to be a great addition to Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, he's very intense. I think he's very knowledgeable about the car, uh, how the car needs to be for the race and things like that. And I think he can contribute to our whole organization. We're spending time with Terry Labonte. He and I will be together, where, as a matter of fact, we'll rejoin you folks in just about an hour and a half or so, and we'll kind of 
look back. We've got some video of Terry in his quarter midget days. We've even got a couple of interesting stories to pass along. So we'll see you in about an hour and a half as we continue here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Guys, back to you in Charlotte. Thanks, Eli. Yeah, great okay. job. We appreciate it. We'll see you in a little bit. Right now, we've got to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more with TNN's Motor Madness. We're going out to Monster Truck Race in a little while. Welcome back to TNN Motor Madness. All the action uh, getting underway down in Daytona for Speed Weeks 1997. And uh, the rules seem to always make headlines in the news. But ruling on the track were the Ford drivers down there today. In the first practice session for Winston Cup, Rusty Wallace, the quickest of the lot. Katie? It's amazing stuff, and we'll be talking about that a little more. But yesterday, the NASCAR Winston Cup teams unloaded their cars and went through inspection. Now, uh, today, they took to the track for the very first time. Now, with the 500 still about nine days away, the teams will still have a lot of time to dial in their cars. Of course, there are always your pre-500 favorites, like Earnhardt and Jarrett and Gordon, but there's one guy who has stood in victory lane before and would like nothing more than to win the 500 for the second time in his magnificent career. And it would look best in his brand-new car, celebrating his 25th year in the series. Automotive and chrome and all that stuff kind of shiny all goes together. It'd be neat if I had a chrome car. And they said, man, you can't do that. You can't chrome a car. I said, I bet there's a way. This is the 90s. The technology's got to be out there to chrome a car. So we went to work and uh, Keith and Van and Joe and sure enough, we got a chrome car. And Darrell Waltrip has certainly been in his share of Bush clashes, but unfortunately for DW, he won't be there on Sunday. But one man that will be making his first ever start in the Bush Clash will be Pennzoil Pontiac driver Johnny Benson. Benson secured his spot in the race by winning the pole last year in the spring race at Atlanta. This is my first one, and we're just going to, you know, when the green drops, everything's going to sort out, and everybody will find out who they're friends with and not. And, you know, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I don't know what to do. This is the first time I haven't talked to anybody yet. I just assume when the green goes, everybody's going to go in the fastest lane that's going. I'm really looking forward to the Bush Clash on Sunday. It's always one of the most exciting races of the year. But then again, what isn't exciting about Daytona? Motor Madness's Matt Yoakum is at the beach and has the scoop on what's been going on. Katie and Randy, after months of winter testing, their real season's finally here. Teams unloaded their hardware yesterday in Daytona. But to give you an example of how pumped up these guys are to be here, instead of flying down on Thursday on a chartered flight, Johnny Benson instead left Wednesday riding eight hours in the team transporter because he couldn't wait to get to Daytona. Everybody was coming down, and I thought, what the heck, I'll just ride in a truck with Mike. And, you know, he does a tremendous job for us the whole time he's down here. Nobody gets to ride with him, so I thought, what the heck. Oh, it's exciting. It's nerve-wracking and exciting because uh, you get here and, you know, then you, there's some minor little rule changes and, and you're just trying to get through inspection and then you find out if, whether you're fast or whether you're not. You know, I just want get, to get through qualifying and then start racing, and that, that's when I get excited. NASCAR's inspection station, nicknamed Buster's House, has been extra busy over the past two days as a number of teams have had to make two or three visits before passing, which has earned the place the nickname Room of Doom or a couple different variations. I could call it a few other things, but I won't. It's, it's pretty bad this year. Uh, we, we've tried it a couple times and we can't get through. Uh, we've gone up with the springs 50 pounds on both sides and we still can't get through. We try to, uh, to do all we can to, to make sure that uh, we don't leave anything on the table and sometimes we go over the line, sometimes uh, you don't. The first real let's see what you got race, the Bush Clash, rolls off at high noon on Sunday. Dale Earnhardt has won the high dollar event six times. He'll start ninth, while Terry Labonte drew the lucky number one starting spot. I have no idea what to expect for the Bush Clash. We'll just go out there and, uh, you know, see how well we are, and uh, hopefully we'll learn a little something for uh, the race the following Sunday. Now, qualifying tomorrow at 2 p.m. will lock in the front row for the 39th annual Daytona 500. Interestingly enough, that's where the most winners have come from. 14 times, drivers from either the pole or outside pole have gone on to victory lane. The last time the pole sitter won this race, 1987, and Bill Elliott. Katie and Randy?
Wow. Amazing. Well, you know, that's why they get there so early. They have mm. to go through inspection. That's, yeah, that's right. I feel for those <laughs> mechanics. I'll tell you, oh. trying to get those cars ready and get through inspection is one of the toughest times of the year. It's got to be. But luckily, they get it over with right off the bat, and mm. then they can move on, yeah. right? Right. It's amazing. Well, we need, we need to take a short break, right? I think we should. Okay. We'll be back in just a moment <laughs> right here on TNN Motor Madness. <laughs> That was a quick break, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quick. We're back. And <laughs> we I'll... promise you it was quick. Man. And now we've got the monster truck action. Man, I've been looking forward to this. We haven't had it in a couple of weeks now, but yeah. uh, we're going out to the Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri, where Ralph Shaheen and Mike Galloway are standing by. We're looking forward to this one, guys. Well, thanks, Randy. We're looking forward to a good show, too, and it's nice to be back with the monster trucks. You know, you guys commented about the uh, cold temperatures and me being around with it. Now, remember, last week I was in Phoenix. It was nice and warm out there with the outlaws. I'm back with Galloway, and it's snowing outside here. Now, you know, they're going to be racing for big bucks and a big trophy down in Daytona next weekend, and, of course, this weekend as well with the Bush Clash and all the money up for grabs. Here at the Kemper Arena, we're going after this right here. If you're a monster truck driver or the one that Mike's got in his hands over here, if you go and race in the pro arena trucks. These will be handed out at Indianapolis at our Super Bowl with the Monster Truck Challenge Series. And I, this is a pretty neat trophy these guys are going after. Well, to these guys, these are worth a million bucks. There are only one of them. There's only one pro stock king of the hill. And there's only one monster truck king of the hill. So yeah, they're worth a million bucks. And they're really neat looking trophies. You know, we got a great group of monster truck drivers here as well. We've talked about this is a real driver's course here at the Kemper Arena. And we got some pretty good shoes behind the wheel of these big horsepower machines tonight. Well, great, great drivers. We've got uh, the snake bite truck, which is always good. Sky's driving that truck tonight. Bigfoot, they're tough anywhere they go. Anytime they unload, we've got uh, bulldozer truck and Samson truck. I like Dan's chances in this because the way the transmission's set up with the Linko and it, it's really got a coast gear in it. When it gets up on top of the single cars, he can just coast over them. Doesn't have to throttle over them, so it should be set up for the straightaway. I'm still going for the bull, though, just because the bull is the bull. You know I, that. I knew that, right? Yeah, I got to go with the bull. Now, the other division, of course, that we've got racing with us is the Pro Arena trucks. And uh, who do you like in that one? I like the Zebra truck. I like Shane. He hasn't ran at the front of the pack all year long. Coming I think it's his back. turn. This guy's got the savvy, and the tr truck is a real good truck. You're starting to go with uh, multi-wild dimension-looking kind of vehicles. I'm Wait starting minute, to think maybe you're changing no, on it's me. It's not rubbing off, Ralph. You're going to come over to the new side and be where I am over here, where we go for the wild-looking no. pieces of the machinery. Well, Shane Ballard is here. He is going to go racing tonight, and he is standing by with the third member of our broadcasting crew who is down on the floor of the arena. That's Fred Bartson. That's right, Ralph. I got Shane Ballard here. Shane, you've been a strong contender and contender every week. You've been very consistent, but what's it going to take tonight to break into the top five, maybe the top three? Well, the big thing that's going to be the win or lose on this track is going to be the ends. Uh, we're going to have to keep it on the ground. It's going to be a lot of horsepower through the straightaways and keep up the speed. Uh, what else about this track are you going to try to take advantage of to maybe uh, break into some new times? He's speechless. <laughs> He's going to be racing good tonight, though. Ralph, back to you. All right, Fred. Thanks a lot. We're up here trying to figure out exactly what uh, what Chevrolet motor this is. What do you think? Small it's, block? No, it's 350, no doubt. You sure? Oh, yeah. It may be bored to a 383. I don't know. We're going to talk about this. We've got some questions about the header pipes. Maybe that'll be the cue. Stay with us. We're coming back to the Kemba Arena. Pro Monster Trucks coming up. Welcome back to the Kemba Arena in Kansas City, Missouri, everybody. We're... Uh, here live with TNN's Motor Madness to bring you the next round of USA Motorsports Monster Challenge for 1997. And before we go racing with the Monster Truck Obstacle Course, I've got to explain a few things to you. This is a King of the Hill scoring. This is how we decide who is King of the Hill, Mike. First place, 60 points. Then it's 10 point increments down to fourth place. Two sets of races. Actually, we have the Obstacle Course, which is first, and then the Drag Racing, which finishes it all up. And these two things added together makes king of the hill. Not individual, but added together makes the king of the hill. And these points are available in each of those uh, competitions. So if you take first in both, you'll come out of it with 120 points. Now, there is one other thing. If you're sitting around in your parking lounger tonight and you're thinking, you know, I might like to try this monster truck thing. Well, here's what you got to build. Yeah. Uh, the drag races are in bracket formations. You jump, jump the green flag, you go home right quick that doesn't take long 
if you cut the obstacle course short with poles, it'll be disqualified. Now, they're going to be, they've been a little lenient on these pole situations. That'll change it later on in the year when we get to the final finals. And uh, each truck mass must pass over each set of crush cars with at least two tires. That's two tires on, two tires off rule. And all trucks must be certified by the Monster Truck Racing Association, MTRA. But if you're looking to actually compete in this, the first thing you got to do is find yourself a 1,400 horsepower alcohol motor laying around somewhere in the garage and, and, and build from there with some old used tractor tires. The big question is, how do you get licensed to drive one of these? They, MTRA has a licensing group that uh, you will be asked to go to a certain location and, and run the truck, go over the cars, make the cur courses, do all of those things. And uh, there is, much like drag racing, a set of pros that have watched you and will certify you to drive. So somebody like Dan Patrick, who you're looking at right there, is a car-carrying monster truck driver, and he is officially licensed somewhere in an archive. Oh, you would love it, wouldn't you, Ralph? You would like to say, yeah, I've got my MTRA monster truck driver's license in my pocket. Well, yeah, you know, the next time you get pulled over for going oh, just a little bit more than you should, or, you know, not exactly coming to a complete stop, you can always, you know, hand them your license and your monster truck license. It might, you know, buy a little break here or there. Don't think so, Ralph, but it's a good idea. <laughs> it's worth a shot. Well, there's Bigfoot. Which one do we have tonight? There have been, what, 14 of these built so far? And this is number 14, Dan Runte. 572 aluminum Ford sets in the back of it. These trucks were designed on Bob Chandler's computer. And I saw the first ones come out years ago, and I just thought the man was unbelievable. He had a computer that he laid all this out, and it ran through there and would see if it would work. And when it did work, said I'm gonna build one just like that and you know what it really does work well it really it, it does if you just think about it in your mind you kind of think well it doesn't really make sense how is this thing gonna actually fly and then that is literally what they do they fly through the air that of course is Bigfoot behind it you see bulldozer and here is Samson and Samson was the first of the 3d trucks as they call it. my favorites Dan Patrick is a true racer he started out tractor pulling uh, he had a Tom McEwen funny car that he pulled with for several years, saw the monster trucks, got into the monster truck circuit, and he builds absolutely probably the best chassis in the country for these trucks. And a 3D truck is one like Samson with the big bulging bicep arms and so forth. It's, it's almost a little more, uh, I hate to use the term, but cartoonish. Dramatic. Dr thank you. Much better term. That's why they pay you so much to sit here. Much. Well, that's the only reason. To save me, yes. <laughs> But it's going to be great racing. You know, this course is, in the past, we've had turns that they could run the trucks in deep, kick the back steering out, and just swing the back end of the truck around and then be lined up with the other cars. That's not going to happen here tonight because you see right in front of each one of them is a singular car. So you cannot get on that hard because it will put you in the air. When you land, then you've got to bring the back of the truck around to line it up, and you'll overshoot the, uh, the big set of cars. That's going to be the touchy part of it. And drivers like Dan Patrick and his Samson machine, they're really pretty busy inside the cockpit. They're steering both ends of the truck at the same time. Right hand on the, st right hand on the steering wheel, left hand on the toggle switch, getting it to swing one, one way or the other. Now you saw the crew member up inside the truck uh, helping to fire up that alcohol motor. Probably pulling down on the shoulder one making sure Dan was set. That's Gene Patrick, and Gene, is, he's a fanatic on perfection. He is great at what he does. Here's a look at a cockpit inside a monster truck. That is Samson. With the bulging bicep, Ralph. See the big fist out front. It's that time of the night. This is going to be good. Lap and a half around, Ralph. Samson at the bottom of your screen. Bigfoot parked up at the top right. This is round number one. Battling for King of the Hill. Every round makes so much difference because the point spread is so small. You can win this, not run well in the drag racing, and when that happens, well, you could either be in a tie or be completely out of King of the Hill altogether. And we're headed, headed towards Indianapolis. In your upper right corner, you see the onboard camera shot from inside Sampson. That is what Dan Patrick sees. He's got 1,400 horsepower, and he's steering straight at a wall. 10,000 pound drop. See what happened to him? Big trouble when he got on his car and got the starting line. Oh, he's up on two wheels. He's not careful. Patrick's going to get lapped. Boy, he's really 
struggling, Mike. Well, and he did just exactly what I thought he wouldn't do. And when the, the flag dropped, he just nailed it. It launched him over that single car, sending him towards the wall much too far to make the swing. Dan Rutte in the other lane just eased it around. Watch, watch it again. Watch what happens when he comes over here in this area to land. Now, he's completely out of shape to run this set of cars. Gets it up on two wheels right there. Now, he has, he's going over with the wheels caught, and he, he's off on this side right here. Bicycles it, barely gets it around to line it up. By that time, it's too late as Bigfoot crosses the finish line right there. Here's a look from the onboard camera. Look at him fighting. You can see him reaching inside the cockpit, trying to get control of this thing. There's where he kicks it up on two wheels. You see how the, the cab is tilted so much. Now it drops down, and he's got control of the truck at this time, but it's a little late in the race to even uh, think about winning this one. Just, just a little too edgy on the throttle. Could be uh, first race of the night jitters. And, well, it could be the clutch hooked up a little quick, too. Well, there's Snake Bite down at the bottom left of your screen and the big bull up top right, a bulldozer machine. You should be in heaven here, Ralph. I am. You've I got, absolutely am. You've absolutely got two three-dimensional trucks all at the same time. I don't know. Ralph is just up here grinning from ear to ear. And I love, for those of you that saw our earlier telecast from uh, Des Moines, I guess it was, where we first saw Bulldozer, he's got the new aerodynamic horns. He's been in the wind tunnel with this truck. Guy Wood has tilted the horns down. Better coefficient to drag. He's going to be quicker, I'm telling you. I'm glad you said that, Ralph. Not me. All right. We're learning the lesson over that first race. If they came up that final corner, I think the aerodynamic horns made the difference up the straightaway. Ralph, I think that sounds great, but I don't think the horns had anything to do with winning that race. No? No. But it was good. It, it looks good great. Race. And I think they all went to school on Dan Patrick's lesson. They sure did, didn't they? Both trucks got a much better lap in than did Dan Patrick, and they did exactly what you talked about they needed to do. So Bulldozer gets credited with the win. That means he's got to come back and match up against Bigfoot. Here's how he did it. Well, the bull is snorting when it comes off that set of cars, isn't he? He's looking right down the recliner. Now, here's his swing. See how he's completely off the throttle right in this area? That coast him across. He rolled through it, and the Kansas City crowd here in Kemper Arena enjoying it. We're coming back to Kansas City, Missouri for more of USA Motorsports Monster Truck Challenge. Welcome back to Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri, USA Motorsports, the Monster Truck Challenge. We've completed round number one with the obstacle course. We are into Pro Arena Trucks with Troy Tate. The bit winner uh, determined by the best of two rounds will bring the top 15 back. All vehicles must pass between the orange stakes. There's Troy Tate. Troy Tate. He's in reverse, the first time we've seen that all season. Well, and he got off the course. And he may have problems on the right front tire, Ralph. Still having some problems getting the... No, the right front tire is up and running. That was weird. Troy can't get lined up. He swung too wide, and there was too much on the throttle. Look at the air under that. Oh, oh boy! Hey. There you go, Troy! Well, he bonsai the finish line, and the crowd absolutely loves it. If you can't win, at least be spectacular. And look, at he's got everything coming off of the truck. Way to go, Troy J. Left front tire. Let's watch him. Look how there it's gone at this point. He is in trouble now. Let's see what happened. Oh, completely Man. sideways. There's the There's tire. We're blue. gone. Did you see it blow? It was finished. We've seen that so much this this year, Ralph, is the people are going to have to, as we've talked before, go to beadlock to go to something to hold it on there. And there's Rusty. Trusty Rusty. Trusty Rusty is the way to get your broken vehicle off the racetrack. Is Rusty hard at work? I think there's two places on this track, Ralph, that you are going to need to be hard on the throttle. One of them is at the starting line. And one of them is at the car at the finish line. I don't think you can go over either one of those real slow because the holes in the in the cars where the, the roof has caved in has, uh, has made big crevices to try to get across. That's nothing that, what, five or six dollars and 
a tire machine won't fix? Yeah. Well, good news is Troy Tate survived much better than did the left front tire. And I think that's one of the best things you can wear when you're doing this, and that's a, a neck roll. I really think that you're absolutely right, Ralph. This is going to be something that if, if it's not standard equipment by now, it will be very, very soon because the shoulder harness in these trucks are made to keep them from going forward when they land, and they are having problems with the trucks being whipped back and forth in the way the trucks are going up in the air and crashing back down, too. Well, you can see Troy Tate had some serious air when he came back down onto the ground, and you fall that far in something that heavy, you're going to hit pretty hard. Well, Iron Horse 4 before, they've got all the parts to fix it, I'm sure. And Ralph, look on the top of it, that's a little ice out from outside. Jeff Wendt is up next in virtual reality. This is a 94 Jeep Wrangler. With an injected 350 Chevrolet. Now, short wheelbase definitely should be the uh, advantage in this kind of a racetrack, as tight as this thing is. But it should be very, very tight. He should be able to handle it. He's done this for so long. He's been at it for about 10 years. And... Uh, you notice how he's lined up to the right-hand side of this car. He's going to try to go across it at an angle, which will line him up to the inside of the second car. Well, they're still uh, getting Troy Tate off the course, and once they get old Troy pulled out of the way, then Jeff Went will be able to go racing. You see he finished eighth in Des Moines. This is one of the trucks that uh, is making most of the tour, if not all of the stops. Yeah, and, and, and doing a great job. But they, Des Moines is not, not up to par for this guy. He's capable of running in the top two or three just about any time he pulls out on the racetrack. With the injected small block Chevrolet, the injection keeps it from uh, the fuel coming away from the carburetor or coming away from the engine when it gets high in the air. We should be in good shape. I think one of the things that's kind of interesting about this class is we haven't seen one particular vehicle dominate the Jeep Wrangler or Ford Bronco or whatever. We haven't seen one particular make come out on top week in and week out. It's been fairly, fairly diversified. Brozovich, of course, is a name that's being bannered about quite a bit week in and week out, but we've seen some others come up with a little SR5, for example, that have challenged. You know, it's got to be a wide open race when you've got somebody like Joe out in front with the good running Bronco, and he's being challenged by a Toyota. Got to be anyone's race. Well, there you see the problem for Troy Tate. They were trying to get him off, and he came into uh, the area where they pull him out and into the parking lot area, and he couldn't make the turn around the uh, crash barrier there. So they've had to uh, well, unhook him and then hook him up to this bigger tow truck, and they'll yank him right out. And a bigger tow truck it is. Now we're going to go with Jeff Wynn. Yes, I figure he's safe enough. Now, Jeff, Jeff goes to the right side also, trying to get out and lined up for that car, and that's just what he's done every time around. This is going to be great, Ralph. This is going to be the one you're looking for. Still has quite a ways to go on the racetrack to get all the way around. About a lap and a half is what they're turning in here tonight. They can really hear him working that throttle. 25.58 is the time to beat right now. So 25.58, set by Jeff Went. That's the one we're going to be shooting for. Remember, they will uh, run them all through once, break it down to the top 15 times, bring those 15 competitors back, and we'll have round number two. And is the best time out of those two rounds. So if that 25.58 stands up from round number one, that could win it for Jeff Went, or he could turn a better time in round number two. It makes no difference which round that time comes from. He did a good job. He was on the throttle, and as you talked about, he feathered the throttle, played with it all the way around the racetrack, on and off, on and off. But what he was doing, most of all, was the way he was attacking these single-car jumps in the curves, where he was getting the truck way out to one side, coming across, and that would give him a straight line, a good line going to the straightaway cars. And that's where I think he did all the good in the world. And we... Well, there's still trying to get still getting Troy Tate out. out. There, there he goes. And Troy just tells him, go on, guys. Get me out of here. I need to get it fixed. And Jeff Youngblood will be the next competitor to uh, make his way out onto the racetrack to uh, take a shot at our course here tonight. He's coming out in a 1986 Chevy one-ton. Now, there he is. this is not what we have... Uh, 
something different for John. Yeah, he's been with us each week, but uh, this is not the truck we've seen him in. Well, I wonder. It kind of bothers me at the bottom of the list that says, thanks, Mom and Dad. Uh-huh. Do they know it? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's hope so. The driver out of Quarter, Missouri. Well, Ralph, long wheelbase, big tires. Tight uh, course, doesn't add up. We'll check our knowledge right here and find yeah. out how, how good we are with this. Well, maybe uh, he's going to take the right approach and pick his way around here. Didn't, didn't take him long to find the throttle, though. He is rolling over most of the... Uh, and and, lost, and rolling to a stop. Lost fire, right? That, that part of the track hits the old starter and fires back up. Now, here again, he had to back up, but it, I think you definitely got to go forward with this thing to try to get into the time at all because there's going to be several people that's going to have the same problem that he's having right now, and that's just getting around the racetrack, and this long wheelbase truck has turned into uh, absolute disaster for a quick time running the course. But he may be in the top 15, Ralph. Never know. 44.08 right now. He's... Uh I have to keep his fingers crossed if he thinks he's going to get into the top 15 at that time of the thing. Well, now, this is probably a little bit more of what you're thinking of, Mike. This is Bill Hubbard that you see at the top of your screen. Bill is out in a Toyota 4x4. This is a four-cylinder, only 144 cubic inches, uh, from right nearby here in Kansas. This, this is a little bit more serious off-road racing type of a machine. I think this might be very serious off-road racing. This is the first time we've still seen Bill. But uh, the truck looks to me like it's set up to tur turn some serious business in racing. Oh, yes. We've heard that sound before. Yeah. Some guy named Stuart. Yeah. Yeah, look underneath this truck. Is it going to work for him or not? Ivan Stewart, the one we're talking about, who has made such a legendary name for himself racing for Toyota in off-road competitions around the world. This is looking great, Ralph. Boy, but guess what? It's still not the quick time. 26.77. I bet we'll see Bill Hubbard again in our 15. And remember, that's okay. He's into the 15. He can come back in round number two now after seeing the course, maybe adjust the suspension, come back. He can lower that 25.58 in round two. Be the winner. Uh, and adjust the, the the throttle. Yeah, now here's a replay. He was he was smooth. He wasn't real fast with the throttle or heavy, but he was smooth. Well, and the suspension on the truck is working so well. He's got so much suspension, a lot of travel in it. Let's the truck land well. It stays on the ground. He really seemed to float around the course. Yeah, that's what I'd want to do. Yeah. Well, this truck we've seen a bunch, the concoction truck. This is Mark Wildschutz and uh Actually, I'm sorry, it's Chris McCoy. The stick Chevrolet in this truck. Yeah, and, and this truck has struggled some. We were supposed to see. Yeah, this, this truck has had problems, Mike. Sometimes it's, it's gone halfway around the course, sometimes only four of the way, but when it's running, it seems to be fairly competitive. And it's running tonight, and it's running well, Ralph. Did I speak too soon? No, he grabbed another gear and went on. Now he's going to take the shot to the finish line. Hard on the throttle, got it just right. Looks like that's a great pass. 27.87 at this point, I would think that might have him in the top 15. That's the best that truck has run all season. You know, maybe he's found some little glitch that put the truck back on course, but we're glad to see the truck stand up with a little V6 in it and run that good. Well, here's the Ford F-250 we thought we were going to see, Mark Wild shoots out of Bates City, Missouri. Another long wheelbase truck. Uh, 390 cubic inches. That's a lot of weight up front. It's a lot of truck. It's a lot of truck. Needs to uh, try not to tear it up because I think he's got a feed in it tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Oh, and we're only running two-wheel drive, Ralph. Oh, boy. Let's choose a nice distance. horseshoe on the front, though. I like the That's emblem. For good luck. Oh. May not be paying off. No. Oh, did he drop the drive shaft? Well, the tires were in the air and were spinning, and when it landed, Usually, Ralph, something has to give. It's a, like a 795 drive U uh, joint. Oh boy! The horseshoe didn't help hold the drive shaft. Stay with us. We're coming back to Kepper Arena.
Welcome back to USA Motorsports Monster Truck Challenge. You're looking at the floor of the arena here at Kemper Arena, and there is Shane Ballard in his Zebra Ford Bronco, 1974 edition out of Springfield, Missouri. He's got an onboard camera for us, too. Yeah, it's sponsored by Bumper to Bumper Off-Road of America in Springfield. I, I still think this truck is going to be the truck to beat tonight. It's a tight course. He's close to home. He's got everything on his side. He's got the camera with him, Ralph. Really blistering the track right now and injected 302 Ford in it. He looks great, Ralph. He really looks good. Boy, he's quick too, Mike. Here he comes up the front straight away. He did it. Yes. 2442. 2442. Shane Ballard lowers the speed now. For the time, I should say. 2442. That's the quick time to beat. Did, uh, did someone mention they thought he might be quick at the start of the show, Ralph? Yeah, I we'll, wasn't really... we'll have to get back to Fred Parson on that a little later on in the program, but he really did. He picked it. Yeah, you had it right, Galloway. You had it right. Let's, let's watch this. Beautiful job. Look how he's out on the outside right here, get, making the swing, getting lined up for that car. Clears all the way around. Now, real tight turn, but good throttle. See how the tires are cut? He's going back out to the right side to make the swing back to the left, lined up for that single car, and he's off of the throttle on that so he doesn't overshoot this last jump. Really, that's the way you got to run this course. Gee, look at those tires, how they flex as we go back on board with Shane. You see what he did from inside. He's, he's a, really working that steering wheel. He's a busy, busy young man. Watch this. Oh, I love it. Steering the whole time, even when they're in the middle of the air. And you've got to, to, to run this course as fast as he did. That's great, Ralph. That's what it's made of. That's what it's all about. Well, here's Big Dog. I like this one already. John Haggerty out of Bonner Springs, Kansas. Well, very seldom do you see one that's uh, four-wheel drive. I've seen them lowered and come down on the ground, but he's sure making a lot of noise with this truck. Big Dog is making big tracks tonight. A 53 F100. Well, these are great trucks. These are absolutely wonderful trucks. This one. This one is on the top of nice. And it keeps on going. Old Ford never died. It just turned into hot rods and pro arena trucks. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it's almost big enough. If he, does, if he doesn't do well in the pro arena trucks, he can qualify for the monster truck show. Well, if he can keep it running. If no, we've dropped. Parts came from underneath, Ralph. Uh, there's one of them right there. That's it. Uh, hope he's got friends in the crowd. He's going to need a lift home. It was just you joints. But he's got the nice fuzzy dice going, though. They're, they're pretty fuzzy dice, Ralph. You're right. They're very nice. And I like the color on it. You wouldn't have to wash it a lot. No. <laughs> Always try to think ahead a little bit, Ralph. <laughs> yeah. Huh. You don't have to wash the truck here at nice. Racing according to Galloway. Nice pair of fuzzy dice in a color you don't have to wash. That's all you need. Let's check in with Shane Ballard, who's standing by with our guy, Fred Martin. That's right. I got Shane Ballard here. I think the reason he was speechless is because he was visualizing that run. Shane, great run. That's exactly what I was doing. Uh, it hooked up real well. The corners, I, like I said, I kept it down in the speed, made it up in the in the straightaway. So hopefully the time will hold, and I'll get a little better time the next go around. So great. Shane Ballard on top. Back to you, Ralph. I think it's interesting, Mike. He felt like he was losing time in the corners. It, seemed to me like he got through the turns pretty well. I think he had to. Oh, my heavens, what's this man? Jim Hopkins, Excelsior Springs, Missouri. Uh, this is another Ford Bronco, a 76 edition, which could be a player. I think it's a, a 76 Bronco in visual only. It's stretched, and it is, it's set up for racing. You know, these people have done, uh, they run a couple of firsts and a second here in Kemper last year. They do go-kart racing four-wheel racing they do bikes they do off-roads get to this little bronco he can blister this track he's got a 351 inside of it a pretty good crowd here tonight uh, kansas city is the home of usa motorsports and uh, the series usually they go to a, a stop didn't they do two or three shows over the course of the weekend we always bring you the friday night action but they'll be here tomorrow night, and then they'll be here on a matinee on Sunday also. And they are such a great group of people. They do. They build a good track. They, they really run great competition. They're just a lot of fun to be around. 
And we, we do have a good crowd enjoying this. Team. Yeah, yeah. Snowing outside, but the crowd inside having a good time. Food and drink and popcorn and peanuts and uh, smiles on the faces of all the kids. And they were, what would they hand out on the way in? You, I saw oh, you swipe a couple. Yeah. Excuse me. Borrowed. They, they gave loaned, them to yeah, me. Yeah, okay. They gave them sure. to me. Little bitty monster trucks in a poly bag. You know, collector like You got me. one of each, didn't you? Uh, well, there was three different ones. Yes, I did. And you didn't bring your partner any? Uh, a while ago, you said I didn't bring my I friends. I bought you any. popcorn. You didn't bring me any little monster trucks. You're right, Ralph. I didn't. Ralph, I'm not going to now. Jim Hopkins. Jim's got green. Let's see how this Bronco works in it. He could really be the man. Look at that, Ralph. That Boy, was beautiful. He, he motored up the straightaway. He's good on the brakes, too. Look at how he got through that turn. Just jumped and then right on the binders to bring it around. Ooh, this is good. Oh, this is going to be quick time. Cut the time. He's coming off that. That's great. Here it goes. He's going to blister it. Blister. 21.91. Holy cow. 21.91. He was flying, Mike. He spanked it, I would say. Okay. In Oklahoma, I guess you would say that. Well, watch the, and the truck handles extremely well. He does have a lot of power, Ralph, and you mentioned he's on the brakes. That's what he has to do right at that point. He hits the brakes, slows it down just enough to bring the front of it around, and then goes down the straightaway. And that's what he had to do tonight. So Jim Hopkins has set the pace here quickly with a 21.91 as USA Motorsports continues from Kemper Arena. Uh-oh, look out. <laughs> Don't you worry about it. Huh? Yeah, I'm oh, in no. the Ford. I got Ted Musgrave's Ford right there, Are so I'm going to be ahead of you. I'm, I'm crashing you as soon as I can get to you. <laughs> ah. I don't think so. You got an NASCAR Thunder in your store, in your neighborhood. This is where we pick this up. Uh, yeah, but mine's quicker. Yeah, well, the, you got the Ford, say. Got that's the Ford. That's, right now, uh, that's the story at Daytona mm -hmm. this season also. Uh, it was actually eight out of the top ten cars are Ford, the top fast cars. Look at Rusty Wallace. Look wow. at Rusty. Wow, that's amazing. He, he's really struggled on the carburetor restrictor plate races, but uh, they did their homework. There's the second uh, five. Jeff and I'm still a bunch of Ford. Dale Earnhardt, Mike Skinner teammates up yeah, there. Yeah, and uh, Skinner uh, a little bit quicker. Then look at the uh, 13th place, uh, 13th fastest time. Big surprise for Daryl Walters. This is just Katie. practice, of course. Just now. practice, but I'll tell you, once they go, once they go through inspection and they get through practice, it's pretty good. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, we'll keep you updated on all that. But right now, let's go back to Kansas City, Missouri with Come on, Ralph let's and Mike. Race, race, race. <laughs> Ford with a 400 Mercury in it flying. Now here's a serious piece. Steve Sanquinetti. Babe, the Blue Ox, a 72 Jeep CJ5 with a 425 cubic inch Cadillac motor. Well, when you said serious, you were absolutely right. Top heavy, too. Oh, and it's very top heavy, but he's, he's still, again, he, he's watched enough to get her out around the curve to get wide to get the straightaway. Oh, babe, it's working. I went across the trunk, but he saved the cone, so he's okay. Not going to take the lead, because you know what is going to be there when they uh, go for the second round. Driver shoot by Levi's. Whoa! Old oh, Babe hustled around the racetrack, 2791. I think that might be good enough to see Babe again in round number two, don't you? I hope so. I like it. It's a good-looking piece. Can't say that I've ever seen a Cadillac in a Jeep, Ralph. 
Never really thought about putting a Cadillac in a Jeep. Well, let's see what we got up next. Mike Nelson. This is uh, your favorite, the one that you keep waiting to see it uh, take off and storm around and become number one. Got, he's got horsepower. He's got everything I think it's going to take to put him, in, put him in the lead. There is our top five at this time. Look at the look how close the times are, Ralph. Just really working in, in conjunction with each other. The thing I like best about Mike Nelson's driver bio sheet is his marital status. Yes, unless I'm racing. Well, lately that's been uh, not very often. But, you know, this is a 383 Chevrolet, and it should, it's a single carburetor. It should work well on this truck. And they've really done a lot of work with the suspension on this piece, which I think uh, will help him more than anything around here tonight. He's getting around pretty good, Mike. Earlier he ran two-wheel drive a couple of times. Now he's going back and put the four-wheel drive unit under it. I think he's getting around much better this time than we've seen him in the, in the past shows that we've had. The engine doesn't sound real strong, but I think he's going to make the top 15, 2691. Well, not bad. I still think, Ralph, that that truck's got a lot more in it than, than what we're seeing with 2691. Suter, tough and ugly. Oh, get back. This is a big truck. This is a 77 GMC Blazer with a 454. There is no, the, the word mercy is not in this man's vocabulary. It's just not gonna happen. If Pretty, it, I don't think, fits either. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it meant feathering the throttle around the corners or flooring it, he's gonna go for flat on the floor. There's Godzilla with a Tonka or with a Mattel Hot Wheels in its mouth, and that is a Bronco inside Godzilla's mouth. I love that part of this thing. There's a good look at Dan out of Memphis, Tennessee. Been racing for about five years. Self-employed home builder. Hard on the throttle. Got the tires got coming out of it to the left. Now Magnus. If horsepower can win it, he's got that. If Guts can win it, he can do that, too. If Hood Emblems win it for you, Godzilla's definitely first place. Well, so far, we've found several reasons he should go to the lead. And he may do it. Look at that turn, Ralph. He's on it, Mike. We've got a contender. 24-14 for the big bruiser. Moved him into the number two spot, Ralph. Wow, I like that. Just when you think that you've got this... Just when we think we've got this thing figured out, Ralph, and what it's going to take to win. Yep, so much for the theory of little trucks, right? Little lightweight trucks, small motors get around the course, that's not it. Well, he also wins for best hood ornament by far. Much better than the uh, horseshoe. It's Sonny Dorham. Had to think about that one for a minute. Walcott, Iowa, two years racing, and this is more along the lines of what we expect to see in Victory Circle here tonight. This is like my Rocky Ranger that's parked in the airport. Well, it's white. It's a Ranger. That's as close as we're going to get. He's, he's doing well, Ralph. Just doing extremely well. Getting around the course. He's keeping the back end of it running around so he can make the turn. Make the fire. Oh, that, that's the one that broke his That hurt. Yes, it did. More ways than one. 27-48. Might see him back, though. Well, I think he'll be back. And, it, and it, no doubt could have done much better had it not been for the nose over on the next to the last jump. Remember, we're trying to beat a 21-91. We're going to step away. But when we come back, Brozo's Bronco from Kemper Arena. Well, this is the truck everybody's been waiting to see if you've been a regular viewer of our uh, telecast of the USA Motorsports Madness Series. Joe Brozovich, Brozo's Bronco, out of Joliet, Illinois. This is a good truck. And this is a great guy. He, he is such a pleasure to be around. He's always got a smile on his face. He's always very positive about everything. Oh, oh no. No, my. What happened? What? Can you believe this? What? happened to that truck it is smoking it is dead in the water and brozo's bronco after such a big buildup, is amounted to a non-story well a non-story that is just unbelievable we've never seen the truck falter it missed a couple of times even when it missed it ran in the top 
even when we were racing in Des Moines, where it was 56 below zero and everybody else was having problems with fuel pickup and so forth, Joe's Bronco has been consistent. It has run perfect every night. I don't know what went wrong. And he's a little disgusted. Oh, you can be sure of that. Rozo's Bronco never got out of the gate. Stay with us. We're coming back to Kemper Arena. Well, the crowd here at Kemper Arena in Kansas City a little stunned. Everybody was expecting to see Joe Brozovich somewhere inside this top five. Certainly inside our top ten as you take a look at it. He's missing. But he, he never got past turn number one. The truck broke. We don't know what's wrong. Let's check in with Fred Barkson, who's caught up to Joe. That's right, Ralph. I got Joe here. He's still smiling, but uh, Joe, that's something we see a lot. But we don't see you break a lot. What happened? Uh, I think it has something to do with the ignition. Um, either wire come off or got wet or something. Uh, uh, but I did see earlier Warrior, uh, Rory was messing around with it, so I'm going to definitely check into that. Uh, it could be a conspiracy. Rory might have gotten to the truck. Back to you, Ralph. Uh-oh. Well, this truck here has a unique sponsorship to it. It does, right there. Pickensville Bowl. That's great. See a lot of bowling alleys sponsoring the top racing teams. I right. love that. That's right. We'll be there maybe next week bowling a couple of frames, right? Well, I'm sure the gang over the Higginsville Bowl is all stopped throwing the balls down the lanes right now. They're watching their guy have at it right now. Lawrence Randall doing a great job. They call him Zabisco. Getting all the way around the racetrack and doing it pretty fine style. He's in the 24 second bracket. Certainly, can, make it. certainly no gutter ball there. 28-81. Ralph, that looked like a strike to me. Anything else we can say? I think that's about it. Just about all the fun we've come up with. 21.91, still the time we're looking to better. Now, you know, if you enjoy what you're seeing, I gotta encourage you to come out to the next USA Motorsports event in your area. They're going to be up in Buffalo, New York, at the brand new arena up there. It'll be in Gund Arena next weekend in Cleveland, Ohio, which is where Mike's going to be. Albuquerque, New Mexico. They're going to be all the way out of Medford, Oregon. And then we'll catch with our next live telecast from the weekend out in Beaumont, Texas. A lot of great shows with USA Motorsports. This is Don Williams out of White Bear Lake, Minnesota. 51 and an 83 Ford. He's hard on it. This isn't the first time this truck's ever been around one of these tight arena courses. Gets over the gets over the cars very well. Well, you cannot slow down in some of those cars. You've got to just bounce over them, get the tires over, get the back end over it, and then really hard on the throttle. Look at this. 24-41. That's third place, Ralph. They've been working on this truck since we saw it for the first time in Des Moines, and it is really getting to be a pretty good machine. That's right, Hot Monster Madness. I'm here on CNN. We're going to be getting back to the monster truck shortly. Let's take a look at this finish here. The Williams entry. That truck's working very well. This one. Look at the cage offset. Right down the the pipe. What a shot. See that? They've offset the cage. I was talking to them earlier about this truck back in Des Moines. They said they kind of took a stock car approach to it. That worked. Garrett Hurd. That's Steve Hopkins. Steve Hopkins came in and the motor sounds like it's wet. From being outside, it's banging and popping. And uh, there's no speed in it whatsoever. He's just nursing the ramrod around the course. And he just nursed it right out the gate because it wouldn't run. Well, that's too bad. We've seen the Hopkins trucks. Uh, family's got a whole bunch of Ford Broncos. They swear by them. <coughs> It was a 68 edition. Would they have a herd? A herd of Broncos? A herd of Broncos. I wonder what, how many constitutes a herd. Of Broncos. Of, well, of anything. More than five. As opposed to a, well, the cornucopia, for instance, was a five. Well, you know, if you had mums in the cornucopia, then you could have five. Where are you going, Ralph? I'm just trying to follow.
Arm Bruce. Rick Arm Bruce. Yeah. Weekend Warrior, 1981 Ford Bronco with 302 inside of it. Took first place at the Hoosier Dome back in 1994. Was around with a lot of mud racing. The lab engineer for Caterpillar. Ooh, he's hard. This, this guy really looks great right now, Ralph. Just beautiful. Boy, he is getting through the turns well. He's about halfway from the finish line at that point, but the, the rest of it is just gravy. You can really make up good time. He's done a beautiful job on this, this paint. Look out, he is there. 2448, you got a new second place truck. I love the flames on this truck. I love the flames on it. Tony Galloway, you're starting to switch. You're coming over to my side of the thing over here. You're going for the wilder looking pieces of machinery. No, Ralph, flames are traditional, okay? Racing and flames just go together. Watch this jump. Beautiful. Lands it. You got to come to a complete stop after you finish the, the race. Still got to beat this 2191 set by uh, Hopkins. Jim Hopkins came out number nine. Well, this is a truck that's been with us right along. Mike Rosenthal. Cheaper than a wife. The name of the truck, a 1975 Ford Bronco. A lot of Ford Broncos here this weekend. It's good country for Ford Broncos. And here's another racer that is his turn is coming. He's competitive, it runs well. But he, he, someday, before this is over, he's going to strike. The truck doesn't sound quite as good tonight as I've heard it sound in the past. Right? He's getting around the course. He's moving from side to side so he can set up for the turn. He really doesn't have a good, crisp sound going tonight. No, it doesn't. Maybe it'll be good enough to get him in the show. 27.35. Maybe he can go out, tweak on it a little bit, come back in the second round and make up some. But he's got about six seconds to pick up if he wants to uh, contend for the win. Here. The truck was banging real bad. Just didn't miss, just wouldn't come together and run for him. Well, this is a truck uh, that comes all the way out of Fresno, California. Rob Mello is the driver. We expected great things out of Rob early on in the season. He has really struggled. It's a bigger truck. Not exactly the kind of course we would expect a big truck to do well on, but we've seen that go out the window as well tonight. He's done a lot of work on this truck this week. Really a lot of work. Rotated the air and put tubes in all the tires. He really was having problems with the truck landing and blowing the front tire out, like we've seen earlier this evening. Put tubes in it. Really think that this will solve all those problems. Well, let's find out. There's a big test right there. He's still going. I think his big test will come when he sets up this jump and makes the tires turn to the left and get around the course. Mello's still there. This is all oh, he said he had worked on it a lot this week. This is the best he's run all season. 24-36. There's the Rob Mello we expected to see. And he has slotted himself into third. You think he might have went out on a limb and put new plugs in it? Doesn't look like he washed it, that's for sure. He's happy, and rightly so, because he really has struggled, and there was a lot of anticipation that he would do extremely well this season. I personally thought he would just really do great with it this year. Now, gets over that, that car real, real well, and the tires, he said, he just that's where he's really done a lot of work this weekend, and it shows up because they, they stay on the rims, and that's where he'd had so much problem. Here's the Wild Horses truck coming out. Gary Backman, 78 Bronco with a 400 cubic inch engine. Washington, Illinois. Tight turn. Not a lot of speed in this truck, but... It's hiccuping. Whoops. Whoops. It did well for a moment, and then Wild Horses got carried away. so I know it's getting very, very cold outside. There's only so many things you can do to, to get it ready to come out and run, but he's going to complete the course. I think we've had enough problems with trucks not making it around the course. Just with the time, you'll get back into the top 15. Well, we've got another big truck coming out. Not big in size, big in stature. Rory Fisher, when we come back to Kemper Arena. 
Well, we hope you folks are having as much fun on your Friday night as we are. Mike and I, we got our popcorn, we got our TV, we got the racing going on, we got uh, some good water to drink, and we're having fun. So we hope you folks are having as much fun as we are watching uh, USA Motorsports Monster Truck Challenge. Crowd is. We gotta go back and get maybe one of those pretzels or a hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog would be good. Well, now here's Rory Fisher. Question. Will Roy Fisher be into this as much as he would if Joe was in the lead? Good question. Really good question. For those of you that are first-time viewers of this, Joe Brozovich, who broke coming out of the first turn, and Rory Fisher have had one heated battle all season long. They've kind of made each other the benchmark for their performances. Well, they, they have, and they're great friends. They enjoy it. You see them walking around here all the time. I don't think that uh, Joe being out of this is going to bother this guy at all. Look out. Here we go. 23.89, that's your new second place time, 23.89. But Mike, he is still two full seconds off of Hopkins. Here's the replay, let's see. Do you think he can make that time up? Well, I, I think two full seconds is way off because this looked good. All this run worked well, the truck worked well, he handled it, drove it the way it should be. Look at the bonsai. This, this little truck is indestructible, isn't it? You know, he's got a little cosmetic work to do, but don't worry about that. Leave the motor alone. This is great. This is absolutely great. Now watch, look at his hands on the inside where he's beating that throttle around, beating that steering wheel around, getting all the way around the course. Beautiful job. Rory Fisher puts himself second into the field. Let's check down to Fred. Roy, you're in second place, but still two seconds off the pace. All right, I, I, I had to do a little extra work to Joe's Bronco to get that, but I got it. <laughs> nice job. Thanks. See you next round. Well, we'll have to see if he can make up that two seconds. This is Greg Hosman, and I don't believe we've seen this piece yet. It could be because he's hauled from California to be here. Citrus Heights, California. Out in your country. I've got news for you. That's the next little uh, community over. I'm from Carmichael. That's another community inside of Sacramento. He can take the lead route. I've seen this truck run out in California out in Oakland last year, and he has the capabilities of taking this lead. This truck looks just like one of Ivan Stewart's early trucks, but he put the truck together piece by piece. Let's see if he doesn't shatter it hard on the throttle. Go for it. Oh, he's... Hey, he's guess what? Let Rory Fisher has got his work cut out for him. Not only does he have to get around that 21, but he's got to get around this guy as well. This gentleman, I think, is potential. California Mike, what'd you expect? The Monster Truck Challenge coming back to Kemper. Welcome back to TNN Motor Madness. Katie Haas, Randy Pemberton here. Yeah, we're uh, planning our halftime. Uh, you know, we gave you a lot of the questions about Daytona. We're going to have all the answers for you coming up. Plus, Eli Gold will have more with Terry Labonte. Terry Labonte, the younger years. We've got some great footage to go along oh, with that. That's going to be fun. Right now, let's go back to the side now. We've got, uh, of course, Ralph and Mike. Who knows what they're eating now? Well, Katie... Just uh, one time. Yeah, one time. you know... And you're branded for life. Yeah, yeah, it's completely. We'll just be pigging out forever. We're just good yeah, old race hot. fans. That's all we are, Mike. We're your no different than everybody here. else. At the hot dogs are here. Yeah, oh, okay. good. I don't think yeah. extra relish. Yeah, they got relish for you. I no. I'm not having one. We're just good old race fans like everybody else who's here tonight with us and watching on Motor Madness. There's certain ways you go to the races. You have some food, you bring your good buddies with you, like I got Mike and Fred with me, and you watch good racing like we're seeing with our Pro Arena Truck Challenge. And, Jim Hopkins has just stunned the rest of the field. He is two seconds quicker than almost uh, the, the top two guys, about a second and a half quicker than Greg Hosman. But the amazing thing is Rory Fisher is third, and Joe Brozovich He's is not. out of it. The thing about this, Ralph, I, the, the gentleman sitting in first place, it's his. But everyone else has to take it away from him. That's right. To remind you once again of how this works. Basically, you get two runs if you make it into the top 15 to come back for the second round. But it's the quickest time out of the two rounds as you watch Rory Fisher go again. So if Hopkins thinks that that 2191 is good, he can come out and just cruise the second time. He doesn't have to batter it or match it himself. He's, he's already there. If I were in his position, I would not cruise this second time around. 
I think Roy had an advantage tonight when he came out. He came out late in the class. He got to watch enough of the drivers go through the course, enough fast racers to go through the course to know exactly where to be on and off the throttle and how to handle the truck in the turns. So that's the situation with our top 10 for the pro arena trucks. The crowd here in Camp Arena enjoying themselves, having a big time. Oh, they're having a great time. This is really a great family show, and again, we encourage you, the USA Motorsports Show comes through your area. It's a great opportunity to bring the kids out and have some fun and, and take in good professional motorsports. There's a young man having a good time. Now, the monster trucks are going to be coming back out for round number two of the obstacle course. Bigfoot and uh, Bulldozer are going to go at it to decide who's going to get the 60 points out of that. Of course, Bigfoot getting past Sampson and Bulldozer getting past Thinkbite in round one. That third and fourth, Ralph, we have seen so many times. We call the Concy race, but it's not. You really have to fight hard for that because a lot of times that person that wins that consolation race can come back and be king of the hill. That's exactly right. So Mike's going to run out, see if he can't get some extra mustard for the hot dogs. You do the same, and we'll be back with more after this. We are back. That is Doug Demokas, the wheelie king, performing his tricks. He is so good on that. The Wizard of Balance, he calls himself. Well, we're getting ready for the finals of the monster trucks and the obstacle course. Here was the fight between Snakebite at the bottom of the screen, the big green truck, and Bulldozer, the big horned bull. Well, the guy in the Bulldozer truck got over that set of cars extremely well and then did a tremendous job on this car with bringing the car, the truck sideways across the turn, and I think that's where he won it, and that was in this turn. That made the big difference. That put him into the finals to go up against Bigfoot. Doug Demokas is in the final stages of his performance, which means the obstacle course final. Coming up when we come back to Kemper Arena. Well, the monster trucks are rolling out here under the Arena 4 at Kemper Arena for the consolation race, which we'll see first in our obstacle course competition. And remember, they'll, they'll come back out and do the drag racing shortly thereafter. There's a good look at Snakebite. Sky Hartley doing the driving this evening. That's a great name for a monster truck driver. That is. Sky, Sky Hartley. Better than Bill Mudd, I guess. Ooh, that's, that's Samson on the other end, barking. And what? Patrick. Snakebite rolls into uh, state. Love the flashing red eyes. There you go again. You're there. I mean, you love both of these. They're, I do. I, they're they're three-dimensional trucks. They're, they're right up your alley. But one basic Chevrolet design body, one Ford design body. I don't think Dan Patrick's going to make the same mistake twice. I hope not. I think Clutch probably, probably got him the first time around. I think the Clutch hooked up quicker than they wanted it to. Kind of like a centrifugal clutch on a go-kart, Well, yeah. Real simple. It's a lot harder than that, but that's the way it works. Dan Patrick's going to slide into position. And all he got left at the line, didn't he? Yeah, Snake Bite with a much better start. Much better start on this go-around for Snake Bite. Rock the pole, but he's still okay. Well, Dan Patrick is only going to take 40 points. Or 30, 30 points, I should say. Into that drag racing. Into the drag racing. That is not what he was hoping for. That's not Patrick's style. Not at all. It's amazing. All the, the big dogs we've seen here tonight, uh, Joe Brozovich has struggled, uh, Dan Patrick has struggled. A lot of the guys we've seen big performances out of earlier in the year are, are fighting it tonight. This guy did a, such a wonderful job driving this snake by truck. Getting off these corners with the tires turned already to get you over the setup. Four cars that you're running up to next. That's the difference. Patrick shut the hood and went on. On board with Dan Patrick. He doesn't seem to be having all that much problems with the truck. 
but just not getting around the course the way he wanted to. He told me earlier today that he had two different sized tires on this, had to run two more pounds of pressure in one of them just to make the circumference of the same. Well, now, Bigfoot at the bottom of your screen moving into position, Dan Runty. Well, now, Bigfoot and Bulldozer. Don't look at me. I know what you're thinking. You like the bulldozer truck. I am a true fan. I'm not a bandwagon fan. I'm not just going to jump on board with Bigfoot because he's the big dog. I'm sticking with the bull. All he right. can run dead last or up front. I like the bull. All right. All right. So be it. I'm going with the bull. We shall see if you don't get the horn. I'll still cheer him even if I do. No, I know you will. And that's, that's what makes me proud of you, Ralph. Okay. Well, they're going to move those two competitors into position. I think it's safe to say the Bigfoot truck is a more uh, up-to-date technology-wise design than is the Bull. So both of these trucks surprisingly look great on the ground. And they are absolutely even at this portion of the part of the race. flying all over the place. We're still waiting to get the official word on that one. I'm still not sure who picked this one off. Looked good on that set of cars. There wasn't a problem, but watch when he comes over this set of cars. He gets out of out of shape. You're not going to see it at that portion. The Bigfoot is in line, gets all the tires and everything over the cars. I think that the, the bulldozer truck got a little bit off to one side. Well, I, first they gave it to Bulldozer, then they said Bigfoot, and we're waiting for the official official, and in Bigfoot the, it is. In the original run, when they, they ran earlier, the, the, you have to keep at least two of the tires on the track. And that was the case. So let's go down to Fred. Fred? Dan Runte and uh, Bigfoot, you know, winner of the obstacle course, how was it? It was, it was rough. I mean, it's a rough track to drive. You know, we're used to running over cars on both sides. They got cars on both sides in the end here, too. So it makes it a little tougher. You know, it's, it's something you got to negotiate with all the way around the track. Ford Bigfoot pulled it out. Firestone tires. We're back again. How will that affect the drag race? Uh, we'll be ready for the drag race. Truck's running real well. Thanks to Mac Tools. And we'll just see how it turns out. Great. Dan Rente. I think we could very easily see either one of these two or both of these two back in the finals of the drag race, the way they both left the line. Well, the obstacle course is done. Plenty more for you when we come back to Kansas City. Welcome back to Kemper Arena. Kansas City, Missouri is where we have brought USA Motorsports for the next round of the Monster Truck Challenge. This was Bigfoot taking the victory in the obstacle course out from underneath the bulldozer. Beautiful job. Dan Runty doing a great job. And here's the finishing order of the point standings. And that's exactly how they finished in the uh, battle on the obstacle course. So Bigfoot will look for the other 60 points in the drag racing. Now, we've been sitting over here enjoying hot dogs and uh, popcorn and things like that. Katie, Randy, what are you guys munching on back there? Maybe some pate? Or no, some they, they won't feed us with, anything. We hot got dogs with nothing. toothpicks in them or something? Yeah, right. I wish. We've got, we've got nothing. You've got the cold. We've got nothing. We, well, you know, we got all the food over there. Uh, but we do have a racetrack, though. Yeah, we've been having fun with that. We're not going to eat that. We, we, we will be going back out to... Uh, to watch uh, some more monster truck action and we'll watch <laughs> Ralph and them e eat some stuff. But right. the bottom line is the monster trucks, the arena trucks have been putting on a great show themselves with the rivalries becoming more intense each and every week. Rivals in Winston Cup, it was Petty and Pearson, Andretti and Foy in Indy cars, Kinzer and Swandell in World of Outlaws and everybody's favorite, Fisher and Brozovich in pro arena trucks. That's right, some of the fiercest racing so far this season has been way Started off the season with a second place finish in Des Moines, Iowa, edging out Rory the Fisher King by .88 seconds, which set the stage for the next battle between the two in Peoria, Illinois. Rory Fisher. Oh, Rory has got a great run headed. Come on, Rory.
to be outdone. It was Joe Brozovich's turn to answer. He's blistering this track right now. I mean, just spanking it. Uh, he's going to drive it aggressive. He knows what he's got to shoot for. 28, 68. Boy, he turned and quit on it. Just bubbled a little bit below. Blister atop the board, 27, 98. But like all dirt warriors, Fisher was going down swinging. It'll be real difficult. I thought he was pretty much maxed out the first time around, but he's given his very, very best shot. Remember, Ralph, if he doesn't, his best of two times will stand for the evening. Big jump. He's hooked up. In the 23, now go. Come on, come on, Kenny. He did it. Yes, yes. 27, 87 by a tenth of a second. Rory Fisher has unseated Brozovich at the top of the heat. So the stage was set for Brozovich, who was about to turn in one of the best runs in arena truck history. He's going to give it his all. Don't go too deep into that turn. He went in deep there. He might have lost his time right there. Look at him. Oh, oh he doubled it. He's never doubled seen it done before. The motorcycles just barely did it. With the double jump, no one even came close to Brozovich, who turned in the best time of the season on his way to clinching the victory, setting the stage for round three tonight. And I must say, I picked Rory, the Fisher King, tonight, but he's got his work cut out for him. Yeah, he does. I picked Ralph to, to one day just have a big hernia out there. I'm not <laughs> sure why. He gets really excited, doesn't he? <laughs> Loves but, everybody. Uh, and he ought to be. You ought to be excited about Eli Gold. He's coming up with the 1996 Winston Cup champ, Terry Labonte, next. I know he's got to the floorboard. He can't do any more. Come on. Take him to the inside. Don't let him get on the inside of you coming around this turn. Here he comes, Art Hart. It's a Dale and Dale show. It's to come off of turn four. You know who I'm pulling for. It's Dale Jarrett. Bring her to the inside, Dale. Don't let him get down there. He's, he's going to up. make it. Dale Jarrett's going to win the Daytona 500. All right. Oh, look at Mark. Oh, dear. Oh, can you believe it? She'll get out of the van and you're going to go get her out there. Oh, that poor girl, she needs help. Race fans, kick off the 1997 NASCAR season with this exclusive offer, an authentic TNN Motorsports NASCAR Thunder Mini Helmet made by Simpson Race Products. Call today or visit your local NASCAR Thunder store to purchase this one-of-a-kind limited edition collectible. Call 1-800-338-6016. We, All had, right. we had that helmet here on the set. Did you, you see it this week? Yeah. You know where it is? Well, where is it? I got it at the house. You got it at the house? Yeah, it, it, I, it was an accident. You took it as a freebie, didn't you? Uh, well, that's okay. fine. Use a nice paperweight anyway. <laughs> We've got those uh, trivia questions coming up about the uh, Daytona, but right now let's go back down to Daytona where Eli has Terry Labonte. All right, guys, thanks a lot. We do welcome you back to Daytona Beach. It's a beautiful evening, getting set to go for the Bush Pole tomorrow. The NASCAR Winston Cup teams. Terry Labonte is still with us on this Friday night. Let's go back and talk about your early days. A lot of folks came to know you as the Iceman stepping in a Winston Cup racing, but what kind of a racer were you back in the quarter midget days back home? Oh, gosh, that's, that's been a long time ago, Eli. I'm not sure if I can really remember all that, but uh, uh, we got into quarter midgets. Uh, I was about seven years old. Uh, we had some friends that had one. Uh, my dad asked me if I'd like to go out there and, and, uh, and watch them, and we did. And uh, I uh, got in one and made a few laps, and we st we got one, started racing it, went across all across the country racing quarter midgets. Uh, it was a great sport, a uh, great experience for uh, for myself, my brother, and our entire family. And then when I was uh, 15, I was really kind of getting too big for the quarter midgets. It's kind of a disadvantage, uh, you, know, you, you know, the bigger you were the, for the weight deal. And, sure. and uh, so we started. Uh, building a stock car, started racing at the local tracks there in, in South Texas, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we're pretty successful down there, and 
I raced mostly in Corpus Christi, uh, Houston, San Antonio, went to Louisiana some, and, and uh, met Billy Hagen, uh, right. who uh, started sponsoring my short track car sure. there, and, and uh, actually gave me my, my first start, and I won my first championship with Billy, and uh, uh, ran, a, ran a lot of races uh, uh, with him over several years. I can imagine you and Bobby, your brother, Bobby Lapani, I can imagine you guys as youngsters. Somebody told me a story once about a truck that your dad had, and it was sitting, and then he got around to selling it, and you guys had shot it up to pieces. Any truth to that? There was a little bit of truth to that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Want to share that with us? Not really. <laughs> okay. It was one of those deals that was a great idea when we did it, and it turned out it wasn't that good an idea. <laughs> Were you guys really um, a couple of... Were you, I don't want to say ruffians per se, but were you guys, uh, were you always in trouble and pushing things to the, to the extreme? Uh, Eli, this was only a few years ago and we did that. So. Oh, I, I, know, I didn't realize that. Yeah, wasn't that long ago. Uh -huh. Now the truth is coming. Yeah, we, we, knew, we knew better. <laughs> you know, you talk about your dad, we mentioned earlier, you and, and Justin. Was Bob Labonte as, uh, as much of a card growing up as he is now talking to him on pit road is a hoot sometimes oh boy yeah i pay i pay all the radio guys not to talk to him on pit road during a bush race because there's no telling what he's going to say he's going to tell you exactly what he's thinking yeah. you know he might not tell you what uh what's right or what he needs to say sure. but he'll tell you exactly what he thinks what are you thinking about tomorrow you're running for the bush pole tomorrow you've got another eight days or so to get set for the 500 what's your gut feeling going in well i don't know i'm a little uh concerned with practice today we didn't really run near as good as we thought uh, we really were confident coming down here really felt like we'd be up in the top 10 yeah. uh, with no problem of course you know we, we got some more work to do and I think that we can probably pick it up a little bit but yeah. uh, we're not quite as good as we thought we would be but you got plenty of time too. Terry Levani thanks a lot we're gonna head back over okay. to the beach and call Thank it you. a night and we'll see you folks come next week we've got lots more coming up from right here in Daytona Beach but right now Randy Katie it's all yours back in Charlotte Thanks. Thank, you. Thank well, you, Eli. I'll tell you what, one piece of trivia, we, we talked about trivia early on in the show, was the fact that he was 30th in practice today. I, I never would have believed that. No, that's about. not trivia. That's, that's fact. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, right. He's a little slow, but, uh, you <laughs> not know. Not where he wants to be. Uh, we'll, we'll work on that, I guess. And we'll come back with the answers to all those trivia questions about Daytona. See if you know your stuff with us now. Oh, Red Farmer. Okay. Red Farmer selected. Welcome back to TNN Motor Madness. Katie Haas, Randy Pemberton here. Hi. Hi, Katie. You threw me there. <laughs> yeah. We've had time to think about our, uh, the answers to our Daytona 500 trivia questions. We gave you a whole roll of them at the beginning of the show. So how about it? Let's see how you do, okay? Okay. Who holds the record for the most victories at the Daytona 500? Well, you would have said King Richard, wouldn't you? Well, you were right. <laughs> yeah, that was an easy one. Yeah, he won it seven times in uh, 64, 66, 71, 73, 74, 79, and 81. Wow. Who has started from the pole the most times? Well, who do you say here? It's that guy there, Cal Yarbrough. He did it four times in his career. Wow. That, that's pretty... Wow, that's incredible. Which three current drivers are tied for the most consecutive time starting on the front row? Well, I knew Billy El Elliott would have to be in there. Well, Dale Earnhardt is too. Uh, Ken Schrader also. Those three in there for Okay. Time. Which four drivers led the most laps and did not win? Well, I, you had to go way back for this. It was Fireball Roberts. Wow. He led 170 laps in 61, but Marvin Finch. Which won. driver led the fewest laps in one? Oh, no. Yeah. Benny Parsons. He led for four laps to check a flag in 75. What year saw the most lead changes ever in the Daytona 500? 74. There were 60 lead changes. Richard wow. Petty came the first driver to win back to back 500s back then, too. Wow. What was the lowest starting position by a winner? And who did it? You know? Uh, I think I did. Oh, yeah? Who? Baker. Nope. Bubba Allison. Wow. He started back 33rd, uh, 1978. Who sped to the widest margin of victory in 1973? You know this one? Richard Petty. He left that field twice in the 15th running of the Incredible. Five. Yeah. What was the closest margin of victory? Ah, Lee Petty. Won by two feet back in 1959. And, you know, it took him like three days yeah. to figure out who the event was. I did know that one. Oh. What year clocked the fastest winning speed ever? You know that one? No. Buddy Baker, 1980, wow. speed 177.602 miles per hour. Well, you knew Buddy ever. had to be in there somewhere. <laughs> Who are the youngest and oldest winners at Daytona 500? You want to take a wild guess? Uh, King Richard. Richard was the youngest, 26 years. Mm. And the oldest? 
Uh, I don't know that one. Who is it? Oh, come on, take a wild guess. Look, there's Carl. Oh, Bobby. Our buddy Bobby. Yeah, I can't believe this, but he was 50 years old. Uh, Only five men, Katie, have ever won the Daytona 500 from the pole. Who? Uh, Cal Yarborough. Mm -hmm. Bill Elliott. Mm. Remember the Bill Elliott one? I didn't know about the Cal. 68, 84 from, from uh, uh, the Cal. Wow. And the very next year, Bill Elliott did it. Okay, how much uh, prize money did Lee Petty win? Not much. <laughs> You're gonna take a wild guess. Uh, Nineteen thousand dollars. That's in '59. That was a lot of money in '59. Of course, uh, Dale, he won three hundred sixty thousand. And uh, boy, oh, that's was a lot of money. Three hundred sixty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Yeah. And how many Pembertons are gonna be involved in the Daytona 500 1997? Uh, three. Three. I hope. <laughs> all your brothers. All wrenches. They're all going to be out there. We hope Ryan will be out there. Of course, with Derek Hope, we don't mm -hmm. know he'll be okay. Maybe and, of course, the Daytona 500 coming up on CBS next Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. I won't be at the track. Oh, well, where will you be? Relaxing. One of the two. Oh, fine. Take a look. All right, we're going to go back to site. We are in Kemper Arena, Kansas City, Missouri. Let's see how the action's going with Ralph and Mike. All right, Katie. Thanks a lot, Randy. Appreciate it. And uh, we didn't do too well in the trivia, did we, Mike? Uh, well, not really. It wasn't that bad, Ralph. At least we didn't break the record. We just didn't get any of them right. That's right. Well, we've got a problem with one of the top monster trucks. Uh, Samson is having some problems, and we're not sure if he's going to make the call for the first round of the track racing competition. I think he's had clutch problems. Is really where I think he had. On that. And, and that showed up in the first round that he ran. Well, here is the first event. It will be Snake Bite in the near lane, the green truck up against Bulldozer in the far lane. Here's a look at the reptilian... Excuse me? Reptilian-looking machine and the bovine-looking machine. Well, Ralph, you're looking at a couple of race trucks. I, I don't know where the reptilian came from, but uh, that is a bovine, you're right. And a good look at those new aerodynamic horns. I think the original horns were steer horns. These are bull horns. And, and what would you say about those fangs? Those are tough. Those, those hurt. I mean, you know, I guess if you mess with the snake, you get the fangs. You know what happened? And the driver of the bulldozer sitting right there inside the eyes. Guy Wood. He's, he's really a nice, nice person. And, uh, his, his daughter's Christy here, and they were originally going to name her Holly. They still need to get... Smoke and out flames the out the, Yeah, they do. We need to talk to Guy about that. I don't know what you do with the fangs, but we need smoke out of the nostrils on the, on the bull. There's Sky Wood. Now, you know, there is a problem with with the bulldozer as well. What, what's that, Ralph? Help me out with that. Well, it. you know, the teeth on the bulldozer, on uh, one side, he's got a chipped tooth. The left, the left side of the truck, there is a chipped tooth on the bulldozer. Uh -huh. I don't know anyone that does dental work on bulls. Uh, Ralph, I mean, I know what you're getting at. And Ralph, there's the chip. Yeah. There's the chip it. tooth. Back, that, just about. Wait a minute, right here. Yeah. There's the chip tooth on him. No, I do not know a bovine dentist. I know a dentist that's big as a bovine, but I don't know a bovine dentist. with the monster trucks in the drag racing format. Now, Ralph, you have be, uh, become quite the expert on this. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and, and I respect, like Randy does and Katie does, I respect your, uh, your input on this. Which one of those trucks is going to win? Bulldozer. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think I had a problem with that. I, I'm a fan, man. I'm not a bandwagon fan. I like the snake bike, good-looking truck, love the flash knives and the big fangs. Bulldozer's got me one over right now. Good-looking truck. Tell you what, they haven't brought you pizza. Wow, I, that, that was some good launch in there. I couldn't tell you, my vantage point didn't allow me to see the winner of that one. No, me either. And Bulldozer gets the win. And you are the man. Truck stuff. Yes, you are. I think it's all in the horns, Mike. I'm telling you, the aerodynamic horns are the key to this deal. Watch the, this truck leaves so well. 
And, and I think it's keeping the truck down on the ground. What, what put him in the winter circle this evening? Well, maybe it's the fact that when they laid the horns out, put more weight over the front yeah, of the truck. Course. I don't know. We'll be back to Camp Arena right after this. Crowd enjoying the show here tonight. You know, monster trucks are very fast. They're very dangerous. But there is a lot of safety built into these trucks. And they have a remote kill switch, which Mike Galloway took a look at earlier today. I'm sure in previous broadcasts, you've noticed that when the monster trucks pull the line and get ready to race, they shut the motors down. This is not something that's done by the driver. It's done by this right here, called an RII, a remote ignition interrupter. What it will do is stop the spark to the engine, and the engine will die. This is the only sport where you can kill a race motor and not be in the truck. The people that handle these have just as important decisions to make as the people sitting in the driver's seat. Our good friend Guy Wood with the bulldozer truck has agreed to show us how this all works. Now the red light is on in the truck. That lets you know that the system is functioning and ready to use. Oh, wouldn't you love to have this on your teenager's car? So that's how the RII system works, and it works pretty, uh, pretty good. Very effective. It is a very effective. Well, round two. Dream machines. Round two of the Pro Arena trucks from Kemp Arena getting set. Ralph, I have always heard that an alcohol motor runs better when it's cold. Yep and a gas motor runs better than it's when it's warm. Correct. Or the al some alcohol motors uh, can actually freeze up around the, uh, the butterfly. Alcohol motors ought to be running great tonight. Boy, I'm telling you, folks, uh, as we said before, as you look at the current standings for the Pro Arena tracks, it has been snowing outside. The doors are open, of course, to ventilate the building. There's a hole in the roof because they're doing renovation here at Kemper Arena. And it, it's cold, Mike. There's, I don't know what the temperature is inside here, but we've got on everything we could possibly do. Right. Now we're Jeff going. Wentz. Ooh, he's after it. He wants this one, and he wants it bad. Jeff Wentz ran a 25-58 round number one. He was the ninth quickest. Nosed over a little bit on that jump. He really wants this, and he's on a good path. Don't, not going to be there this time, but really. Whoa! 22.85, though. That is a big improvement for him. Now, everyone moves up to the number two spot route, but no one has taken over that, that lead. That's exactly right. Here he is in virtual reality. And this may what be what have cost him the races when he nosed over that hard on that, that particular jump. Well, when we're talking about a half a second, that little nose over can cost you a ton of time in this form of race. Big finish. Comes over sideways. Doesn't want to get hung up in anything. So 22.85. Mike, he picked up three seconds, basically, off of what he had posted before. Here's Bill Hubbard, who was 10th after round number one. You know, Ralph, I, I, I kind of think this is going to come as a shock to Bill, because that truck is set up to run this type of course. It was quick, but when you've got nine trucks in front of you, you know you're not that quick. One of them being a fairly stock Toyota. So he's going to be real, real on this truck. You know he's going to have to go for it for everything he's worth just to try to make up that time, and he has got a long ways to go to make it up. Does it look like he's aggressive enough? I think the truck probably on a longer course may be really, you know, tough to beat, but on a short course like this, it's just not going to work for him. Well, 25.09, not a bad effort, but still shy by about four seconds. The truck, the truck works well, and I, once again, I think it's a long course truck. Maybe he's not geared low enough to get a lot of air coming off of that, but maybe the gears in it aren't quite as low as they should be to get around a little short course like we're looking at. Well, next up will be Chris McCoy, who is uh, 14th 
to round number one. This is a concoction truck, which that 14th was the best he had run in 97. Be best showing that we've seen this year with the little V6 power truck. And here again, it's a short wheelbase truck. It's got little tires on it, so it should be able to turn it and get around the course. But I think the suspension may just be a little stiff on this truck. He's softened it up. He'll really be just a little bit better off coming around these courses. He started a little deeper, too, didn't he? Yeah, he just quite a, a bit deeper. A little bit of a run to it. He came over that truck, jumped leading to the right, to make it so he could get lined up for this, this long shot here. on that V6 enough to make it work the way he wants it to. Now he can. 25-85. I think Chris will be uh, not in contention for the win, but happy with the fact that his program is progressing forward. Headed in the right direction, headed to the winner's circle, hopefully before the year is out. Well, here comes Shane Ballard, the zebra truck, the one you like. I really do, and I as felt real good for Shane tonight, but you know, he came out and probably made his best run that he has made all year long coming into this. Ended up seventh in that. Let's see if Shane doesn't uh, try something a little different. Springfield, Missouri, just down the road a little way. It's not too far. 24-42, he's about two and a half seconds off of Hopkins' time, 21-91. Tires cut good coming off that jump route. Let's take a ride. Oh, that looks good. Now swing hard to that over the little one single car. You got to come in and really stand on it. Try to get some air there. Jump on the brakes. At least get over the one hump. Now hard left. And then you got to go for the big one. Hey, we got oh, he's, he's way off to the left, Ralph. 23.08. 23.08. Well, he picked up time, but third place. That's a great run here. That's it. That's the best we've seen out of the Zebra. Yep, came in seventh into the round, goes out of it third. That'll make you happy. Yeah. Now this is the finish, and he gets, gets off to the side. See, almost... That cost him a tenth or two. Had to. Came back across the cars, but that's, that's not the short way home. He just might have dipped into the 22-second range if he'd not had that problem. Well, wow. you know, I, I've watched these. You think these drivers take a pretty good body beating in this yeah they they sure do and some of the guys really get whipped around i think five point harnesses and the neck rolls will, will help quite a bit and i think we're going to see a lot more of that what we're going to see now is the guy who's atop the board with 2191 jim hopkins in his bronco does he lower it or does he uh slow down slows down just a touch he's trying to lower it though isn't he definitely doing that and that could cost him. He might overdrive it this time. So far, he hasn't done anything to make it around the course in great style. He looks wonderful. He looks great. 2094. He lowered it. Hopkins, 2094. Wow. Well, Mike, we, we thought maybe he might kind of cruise around a little bit and Rest on his laurels with the 21, but 2094. Truck is handling evidently too well to rest on anything, but a hard foot on the throttle, and that's what he does. This is real pretty right in this point, right? When he gets over that, and then he's lined for the long shot. He's up over the last car, now headed for the, the big jump, the long jump. Very nice. Well, let's go down to Fred Bartson. Jim Hopkins, you bested that first round time. You got a 20-94. How'd you do it? Just luck, I'm telling you. It's just luck. I'm rusty. It's the second time out in this truck this year. Just, just pure luck. Very nice, Jim Hopkins. Well, if that's rusty, I can't wait to see him hot. Back to you, Ralph. Uh, that's one thing the competitors don't want to know about. No. Now, Ralph, would you like, would you drive one of these? I mean, would you, this, is this something that you'd like to try? I think this, this would be a, a really fun form of motorsports to get involved with. You know, you, you can do this. I don't know if you can win, but you can do this for a fairly small investment. I would say, you know, some of these pieces of machinery we've seen over the year look like they almost have been driven right out of the junkyard, got them running and are competing. 
uh, you know, maybe five grand or so, you could be in there. Obviously, some of these guys have put a lot more into their machines, like Steve Sanquinetti has. But yeah, I think this looks like a real kick. I'd love to do this. Got you a ride. That's my guy. Be in Indianapolis. Yeah. Yeah. Joe's turning over the keys to the Bronco. To you. I didn't think Prozovich was that crazy. I caught him at a weak moment. Apparently. Not in the race. No. I didn't. This is a big Cadillac Jeep. Old babe, the blue ox. Quiet. 27.36. Not bad for a Cadillac. That's Cadillac in the round of course. Wow. For those of us that didn't grow up on a farm, what exactly is plowing a furrow? <laughs> Making a long straight row with a plow in the ground. Ralph. Ah, That's okay. plowing a furrow. Just asking. I thought I'd heard most motorsports terms, but you've introduced me to a few. Well, I didn't know the term hickey <laughs> transferred over to motorsports. I learned that in Peoria. Now I know that plowing a furrow is also a part of the racing world that I had not been exposed to yet. I'm trying to bring you up to speed, Ralph, because we're, I'm, and I'm doing this for your benefit. Thank you. Because I know it ain't helping our ratings. Mike Nelson. Mike's got oh. a he, He's held back and held back, and he's got to try to win it tonight. And I mean, it is mandatory. And he is really trying. The engine just does not sound good. Banging real, real bad. 23-29. You know, Mike, the truck performed better. As the driver, the suspension performed much better than the engine. Had the engine stayed up with them, he might have been a player. He might have been down around the 22nd range. So, Hopkins has lowered it to a 20-94, but Rory Fisher still to go. Godzilla has got himself a victim. The Bronco. Why is it a Bronco? Because Godzilla is mounted to the hood. Of a blazer. That's right. And Godzilla's looking to take a big chunk out of Jim Hopkins here if he can. And you know what? I'm not so sure he can't. I think Godzilla stands one heck of a good shot at doing that. Tough and ugly off-road. <laughs> Boy, you can mark me as a believer on this deal. Yeah. yeah. I'm right there with you on this one. This is our kind of truck, isn't it, Mike? Dan Suter, Memphis, Tennessee. 24 second pass sat fourth at the completion of round number one well he might oh man standing up there now mash it uh that's costing him for right, right front, front tire's gone yeah, right front tire is gone so much for that idea ah really looking forward to seeing old godzilla flying around this racetrack Another time, I'm sure we will. Yeah, he's been with us all season long, and we'll see him again. There's the man. That... Watch this. Watch the right front. When he stands it on the nose and it lands on that right front, that tire is gone. It just takes all the weight. What'd you say that truck weighed? About 4,000 pounds. A lot of weight on that tire. Absolutely. So, unfortunately, we're going to cross Daniel Suter right out of the deal. He'll be looking to progress downward on that uh, time. Sonny, I was surprised, came in 13th at a round number one. Thought we'd see a little bit more out of this truck. Maybe he won't make up for it here. You know, and we may be seeing the same thing on this truck that we saw on the other one earlier, that the truck not geared to run these little low, short tracks that we're seeing. Although he's turning that Ford Ranger pretty tight. Much better performance. Oh, he's not letting up on it. But, and he's staying in the throttle too. Oh, that hurt. That did hurt. And I'll tell you what, he was right in the thick of this until that last turn. It's hard to go fast with the bumper stuck in the ground. Yep, he's seventh now. He improved on his time, but watch the parts come flying off in here. Oh, boom. That's it. 
rebuilt truck because all that came off of it that time was mud. They'll be finding dirt in the front of that engine for a long time. Yeah, check the harmonic balancer, guys. There you There's go. Something. That's, it's nothing that money won't fix, right? No, no. That's the key to racing, more money. Now, here's a truck that performed better than we expected. 2441, good enough for sixth in round number one, Don Williamson. Does this truck not look great now? Don Williams has really got this thing looking nice. And remember, it's more like a stock car. Look at the offset with the roll cage coming at you. Mm. Very few stock cars go nose down. Yeah. Uh, might have to offset it to the front. Oh, Ooh. that, that, that's, uh... That's not good. Turn out the lights. That's not good. <laughs> yep, you're broke. You're right, Don. That's the sign for there. There's a man that's a little... Got to be a little bit on the nervous side. Said he was rusty. Jim Hopkins watching everybody as he's lowered the time. At 2094. The Hopkins family and their Ford Broncos have laid claim to their home track here, Kemper Arena. So we'll get old Rusty out there. The front loader. I've learned in these farm terms. Front loader. We'll be back. Welcome back, Randy Pemberton, Katie House. Still here for Motor Madness on a Friday night. Boy, I can't wait for next weekend. Yeah, we got a good show for you. Next Check this out. Week, World of Outlaws, Lake Paris, California, Valentine's Day. Oh, it'll be lovely. <laughs> it's a great way to spend uh, your night with your loved one. Checking out all that crazy of the Swindells and the, and the mm. Kinsers. And oh, man, it's going to be a great show. Good stuff. But let's go back out and see what's happening. Kemper Arena, Kansas City, Missouri. Hey, Katie, now I know you're an old country girl. Do you know what plowing a furrow was all about? It was all about? Well, what was all about? Plowing a furrow. Plowing a furrow. Yeah, well, uh, actually, Ralph, I'm a city girl. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, just a shot. I know you can't go fast when your bumper's in the dirt, though. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> that is very true, Katie. You got that exactly right. <laughs> Keys to going quick from Katie Haas on TNN Motor Madness. And Rick Armbrust needs to take a lesson from Katie tonight. Not stick that nose into the dirt like he almost did there. Well, here's a truck that is just... Wow, it improved its image also. When I, this truck came out, it was a little rough. But, oh, oh, man. That was not pretty. Oh, he was really digging, too, Mike. It looked, looked great. But I, and Oops. That not is, only do you not want to stick your nose into the ground, you don't want to have things dripping out of the back end, either. That is the mark of transmission fluid, Ralph. And Rusty goes to work. Seeing more Rusty than we want to. Got the tires cut. Looks great in this box. But watch right behind the cab. There's a hole in the back of the bed right in this area. I want you to watch right there when he lands. There's going to be a little... There, there is a telltale sign of transmission fluid getting up against some hot headers. Broke something major in the transmission area. It scares me that they have given you a telestrator. You know that? It just scares me. Wow. Arm Bruce, boy, I, I'm really sorry to see him go out that early because I thought this truck might not have won. It might have been too big of a truck to, to come out and beat Hopkins, but I really thought he was going to put on a show for us, and he had started off so well. Cheaper than a wife. That's right. Mike Rosenthal's theory. That's what he put on the side of his truck. He drops it. But he had a good move. Had the tires cut to try to get around that corner in time. He's not going to take the lead tonight, but it's going to be a very respectable run. 24-20. Well, after the way he performed in round number one, I got to believe a ninth place finish. He picked up three spots already with a, three more trucks to go. 
definitely uh, an improvement. Not the kind of nine he was looking for. Got to be happy with it. He was also drifting over towards the, the crush cars, and he had the tires cut even though it was in the air. But a good, respectable run for cheaper than a wife. It's really amazing the, the twisting that the front wheels take. I just wonder if the, the guy's arms don't get real tired. Even just in 28 seconds, the work that they're doing and the stress on their body's got to be getting tired. Well, here's uh, old Rob Mello out of Fresno, California. Well, he's been out of California for several weeks. You know what? This guy's having a great time. And I can't blame him at all. Running the whole tour. Toad East is sticking with it. Doing a good job. This is going to be one of his better nights. Amazing what this Bronco can take. It truly is amazing. And it still just keeps right on going. He's taking a shot at it, Ralph. 22-82. A much better run again for Rob Mello. That's third. That puts wow. Mello. That'll make him smile. Yeah, he's, he's liking it. Well, let's watch this again. You can really hear him working the throttle, too. The tires cut, trying to get the truck around. Slings it into that turn and slings it hard. Clears all of the markers on the side. Got a little high in that part of the track. Now this is the this is headed for the finish line. This is where the clock stops, so you want to go quick. Mello looks good. And that's really the most important turn because you got to get a good turn there so you can get a good drive to the finish line and save some time. There's our leader and the two most interesting trucks yet to go. The third quickest and the second quickest. This is Rory Fisher. You know Rory's here to play. Yes. He's got something laid up, ready to go. Yes, he is. He wants to keep the tradition alive. He thinks this is the time to win. Did you see how he angled out for that turn? He's got it all in his head. I think he probably drove this 20 times in the pit before he got out here. I wonder if Frozovich gave him any tips. I wouldn't bet on that. Oh. Stood it on his nose. Katie won't like that. No, and he won't go fast that way either. No, he's he's out of it, Mike. Frozovich, 20, or I should say, uh, Rory Fisher, 23.50. Seven. Mm. I think tonight was probably the first time I saw that truck look like it laid down just a little bit. Didn't run quite as good in one of the last corner as I had seen the truck run time and time again. Did you see how far his head came forward? Almost into the steering wheel. Now right in this area is when I think the truck lays down. It just it cuts out pretty bad. You notice I didn't get you a ride in that one. Right? Thank you. Appreciate that. I wouldn't mind going for a ride in this one, though. This, this could be the man, right? This guy, no doubt to me, can lower the lead. The lead could change on this time around. Greg Hossman out of Citrus Heights, California. Good old Northern California boy getting ready to go at it. He could stun the big guys here tonight. Oh, up on three wheels. Now he's going to have to just really work hard to make this up. Truck really sounds strong. He's awfully aggressive, and that might be his downfall. 22.03. And there's a happy gentleman. That is our winner right there, the king of the hill. I think Hosman just went a little too hard, Mike. Well, in the, coming over the first jump, I think, is what got him in trouble to keep him from winning it tonight. Well, let's check in with Fred Bartson. Greg Hosman, great run. He got a little bit out of shape up there. Got bit by the cone. Good run. Well, I hopefully we'll see him back again. I'd like to see that truck continue on the tour. Love it if he can stay out from California. Well, the Pro Arena trucks are done, but we got more with the Monster trucks when we come back. to the Camper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri, where we have crowned a winner in our Pro Arena trucks. Let's go to Fred Bartson. Yeah, I've got him right here, Jim Hopkins. Uh, Jim, that was a great run, very low score. We're going to go through your run here on the replay. Why don't you tell us about it? Uh, might have that in a few minutes. Tell me, what was the key to your run? Uh, just, I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a good truck. It's a strong runner. It, uh, the suspension handles real well on these tight little tracks. 
Right, right in here. I didn't know if I could handle it or not. It, it the truck come around real well. It's, it's mainly the truck. It's not the driver, believe me. But it works real well. Okay, well, Jim, I find that hard to believe. It seems like you're driving hot tonight. Another win for the Hopkins Racing family. Thank you, thank you. I, uh, this is the second time out this year in the truck. I'm real rusty. Uh, it just feels real good. They're real good. Okay, well, all right, back to you, Ralph. Jim Hopkins, the winner here tonight with a 20.94, the quickest time we've seen so far in 1997 on any of our events. We'll be back for more right after this. Fans here in the crowd uh, enjoying themselves at the USA Motorsports Monster Truck Challenge. USA Motorsports makes their home right here in Kansas City, so it's a big night for them. You know, hauling one of these trucks up and down the highway uh, can be a difficult thing to do. It, Dan Patrick does it in a uh, fairly luxurious way. Mike Galloway took a look at Patrick's tow wheel. Hauling a monster truck up and down the road can be a real problem. And each and every driver and truck has their own ideas of how they do it. Well, this is a high-tech performance trailer. It's the home of Samson. Now, Samson, the truck, sits in this area right here. The big tires, they set at the back and are raised up so the truck can go in. You've got all the niceties of home in this trailer. Of course, where would Samson live? Have to live in the Taj Mahal. And that's what this is all about. High-tech Taj Mahal. Stainless steel cabinet tops. You've got a parts washer on this side. Plenty of storage for Samson parts on this side. It's top of the line any way you look at it. You know, all of this can be a little exhausting to me, so follow me. We're going to take a look. I need a break. Now, we've seen the place that Samson lives, but this is where Dan Patrick and his crew live while they're on the road. And it's got all the comforts of home. We've got remote control satellite TV, running water, microwave, refrigerator with water. Got everything you'd ever want. Did I mention a king-size bed? You know, now this is really nice. I just wish my home in Oklahoma was this nice. Uh, we only have to deal with you on occasion. Poor Mrs. Galloway. Oh, man. Well, they are uh, attacking a mud bog here in the uh, intermission portion of the racing program. And this poor guy has sunk it up to the hubs. Then he's got to try driving home in the cold temperatures and let all that mud freeze overnight. We're back for the final round of the drag racing competition with the monster trucks as we work our way towards the king of the hill and sending somebody to Indianapolis with a five round, Mike. Could be either one of these guys. But that buy round is going to be very important once we get to Indianapolis in March. Could be both of these guys. Not tonight, but in various venues. When we get to Indianapolis, uh, oh, yeah. take a look at the bowl. We're going to eat big beef jerky pieces. If you get a victory in one of the rounds of competition, you get a buy at Indianapolis, which means you get to skip round number one, and that can be very important as far as... Uh, making your way through the program in Indianapolis claiming the big prize. I like it. This is going to be good. That is the eye of the bull. That's the system you were talking about. Exactly. This, and it really is a super fail-safe system. It works extremely well. If you're wondering what all the white is in front of the jumps, it's flour. They put the flour down there to give the drivers an idea of where the uh, ramps are to the jumps. I think that's a really neat idea. Outside they're doing that, but it's much heavier. It's called snow. It's just old baby flour. Oh, bulldozer left him. We will uh, we'll have to check and see what exactly happened on that. Dan Runte very seldom gets left. He might have had a problem. All right, let's, let's watch the starter. The starter's right here. And let's see what happened. No, he leaves. Dan just got left at the line. He just, he took a nap. 
I really think that's what happened. I mean, that to me, that looked like they absolutely picture-perfect run. We had a good shot there. We had the flagman. The truck never moved until the flagman raised the flag. And when it did, your bull was on top instantly. Well, see Fred Parkson down there with him. How's he doing, Fred? Well, Ralph, uh, Guy Wood uh, storms the arena with the bull. That's a major upset there. Yeah, I'll tell you, we've been running pretty hard, and uh, we're pretty fast off that line. That's what counts. If you get off that line right away, you got to race, you know, with these one set of cars like this. Looks like Bigfoot might have been sleeping at the line, eh? Yeah, I think he did. I think he was eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. I'd like to uh, thank all my sponsors, Alberto Smokecraft, Technique Towing, Twin City Auto Body, and the guys at Tire Bargains for all their support. Great. Guy Wood with a big upset in the drag race. Ralph, back to you. Well, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich could slow you down. Not a lot. You know what I mean? You had one earlier tonight, and you've been on top of everything. That guy's having a good time with the truck. Well, the bull, it, would, it just would have been better if you had stuff coming out of the nostrils. Is this, does this really now? Well. Shakes it up. We're going to have to figure this out. We'll have it for you when we come back from this commercial. Stay with us. We're back where we just completed the uh, Monster Trucks. Let's get back down to Fred Parts with Dan Runty. Well, I'm here with, Dan, here with Dan Runty, who happens to be King of the Hill. Dan, there's a little bit of a mix up there in the finals. You're the King of the Hill due to your time in the obstacle course. How do you feel about it? It turned out really well. I mean, we knew we were going to the finals here. We we're going to run a good race. So just a couple screw ups. I mean, I can't, it's hard to explain right now. It needs to be talked about. We just have to go back and figure out what happened. It wasn't on our part, but I mean, Bigfoot's still number one, and we know that, and we'll be back next week. A lot of stuff happening down here in Monster Trucks. Dan Rente, King of the Hill. Well, it sounded like maybe Mike, uh, he stepped on the throttle and it didn't react. Something laid down on it. It's just not like Dan Rente to be left at the starting line. Well, here's a look of our two kings of the hill as they march their way towards Indianapolis and those two beautiful trophies we showed you at the beginning of the show. Dan in the monster trucks and Jim Hopkins, the quickest run we've seen so far, Pro Arena Trucks, taking it in the Pro Arena Truck class. So there's a look at Bigfoot, Dan Runty, our king of the hill. Katie and Randy, we've wrapped up another one. So. Wonderful. I hope you're not too stuck. But uh, had a big time out there, Ralph. That's funny. So the uh, King of the Hill came back and won. Well, that's right because you, it's two events. I mean, right. you, you got to be the best in both events, and and, and he won. He's right. still number one, as Dan Rundy says. Well, that works out. Those Bigfoot's been around a long time, mm -hmm. and if you ever wondered how this monster truck mania began, well, it didn't start out as a competition. It was a man trying to build a bigger, better, and badder machine. His name, Bob Chandler. Monster trucks, it wasn't dreamed up, it was just something that came about over a four-year period. Uh, I put bigger tires on my truck, and then I put a bigger axle in the truck, and I put a bigger engine in it. And one thing led to another, the truck got bigger and bigger and bigger, and all of a sudden it was, became a monster truck. And all of a sudden, Bob Chandler was on his way. The founding father and inventor of monster trucks, Bob Chandler started this innovative sport by creating a promotional tool for his shop, the Midwest Four-Wheel Drive Center, 23 years ago. Since that time, monster trucks have evolved rapidly. And in 1981, Bob Chandler came up with an idea that would guarantee his invention's existence and propel monster trucks to mass popularity. We first run over cars because we wanted to see, we wanted to see if the truck could do it. It was for fun. Uh, I got a hold of Jim Cramer, and we put a couple cars out in his buddy's field. And, uh, and we went over it, and we really enjoyed it. It was funny, funny to watch. We had it videotaped it, and everybody seemed to like it. I eventually did the first car crush for a promoter, and from that point, I realized that it was something that was completely different. The crowd loved it. They loved to hear the cars crunch. They liked, liked to see the cars crunch. I liked to hear the sound. Uh, and from there, I knew it was going to do something. I had no idea it was going to be this big. From that point on, Bob diverted his focus away from the shop and toward the monster truck industry. I made a decision early on that Yes, I'm going to build a second monster truck. Am I going to flood the market? Well, if I don't do it, somebody else will. The truck evolved. Bigfoot went through 18 different tire and wheel combinations. Chandler was the first to use computer-aided design in creating the first tubular chassis. From the nitrogen-charged shock to the hydraulic front and rear steering, Chandler was responsible for it all. Well, I drove Bigfoot for years 
before I got out of the seat. When I got out of the seat, I moved into more of the design and uh, the engineering end of, of Bigfoot. Um, I started, I learned how to use computers, I learned how to use AutoCAD, and I really seem to enjoy that now as much as I enjoyed driving back then. Bob Chandler's made all the safety enforcements, uh, the dry shaft loops, safety kill radios, fire suit, I mean everything. Before they would drive with nothing and hang out the windows in the old days. Now it has become a sport that is safe for you and I as a driver and also as a spectator. He's pretty much the guy that stayed ahead of everybody so far. Like, like they say, the competition's getting stiff, but I mean, Bob Chandler's the, the guy that did it all. As far as, as far as jumping in one of Bob Chandler's trucks, um, a lot of people out there know it, that Bob's trucks are great, and, and just to get in there and drive a truck for him is probably the most excellent privilege that I've ever had in my life. Bigfoot has outgrown Bob Chandler's wildest expectations. From crushing cars in a field to crushing cars in more than 11,000 appearances in all 50 states and 15 foreign countries. From being the only monster truck driver to winning the world championship six of the past seven years. What a long, strange trip it's been. We're up to 14 trucks and we do over 700 show days a year. Uh, I don't think it's going to stop. Uh, in fact, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to let it stop. I'm going to keep going, keep trying different things that the public seems to like. That's the man, Bob Chandler. He's going to put it all together, and it is an incredible thing it's to watch. It's an American success story, to say the least. I mean, he created his own industry. That's amazing. And every boy wants one. You got to have it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, if the monster trucks, uh, you like those, well, you also must like those sprint cars. We're going to have all the action for you next Friday. Next week, that's going to be a good one out there, the world of outlaws. Always is. Great, exciting action. And we'll be at Lake Paris, a beautiful spot for mm -hmm. it. And uh, so please, make sure you join us if you can. And also, you know, next week will be February 14th, two days before the Daytona wow. 500. So we'll have highlights of the Bush Clash. We'll also right. have highlights, uh, hopefully, of the Twin 125s on yeah. Thursday. Mm -hmm. That sets the uh, lineup for the Daytona Except 500. Except for the pole and the outside pole, That's right? correct. Except for the pole and the outside pole. We'll have all that, and then uh, all yeah. we can give you for the Daytona 500 preview, we Can't will, wait. and the sprint action, too. This is a place to be on Friday nights, folks, yes. here at TNN's Motor Madness. Glad you could join us. We'll see you next week. Okay. Good night. You want Shall we play with that a little bit? Drivers, race teams, and race fans. The 1997 Simpson Race Products Catalog is now available, featuring all the new products and services for 97, plus Simpson's complete line of racer and fan gear. To get your copy, call 1-800-71-RACING and join Team Simpson today. Race fans, kick off the 1997 NASCAR season with this exclusive offer, an authentic TNN Motorsports NASCAR Thunder mini helmet made by Simpson Race Products. Call today or visit your local NASCAR Thunder store to purchase this one-of-a-kind limited edition collectible. Call 1-800-338-6016. Gladiator and Universal Luxury Vans, the official van of tracks, teams, and drivers throughout the NASCAR world. Call 1-800-445-2825 for a dealer near you. By Feather Light Trailers, the official trailer of NASCAR, IndyCar, IRL, and major sponsor of the NHRA. Remember to call Featherlight for all your trailer needs at 1-800-800-1230 or 319-547-6000.